at the end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Hey guys, what's going on? Is the lighting okay, Tom? I know you're making uh, you're making that face. Yeah, it looks alright to, <laughs> to me. I think I think the uh, the camera's a little. Oh, let's see. I didn't touch it. So. That's that's good right there. Okay, you sure? Yeah, that's okay. a happy medium. Yeah. Yeah. Now those two lights were too bright because I think we. You turned that one on super bright the other day because you were giving me my injection and it was too yeah. dark in here for me to see what you were doing. Yeah. So I didn't remember to turn that one down. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Uh, but hey, everybody. Hey, Zach. Hey, Tammy. What's going on, you guys? Hey, people that aren't commenting, but you're there watching. Being yep. sneaky. <laughs> uh, I think this is going to be um, a fun show, if a kind of gruesome one. It's all about man-eating animals. Yeah. And, and there's not, a lot of them. Well, and we're not even just talking about, like, general man-eating animals. We're talking about specific animals that Never ate people. a bunch of people. Yeah. Certain <laughs> sharks, certain alligators, certain lions that ate a lot of people. So it's almost kind of like, almost like serial killer animals. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, so it's going to be good. Like it's I said, I can think of a lot of horrible ways to die. Um, but right up at the top of my list is getting eaten by something. Yeah, eaten alive is pretty bad. I, I really, that's, that's right up there in my top five. Uh, especially like a shark or a crocodile or an alligator yeah. or something like that. No thanks. No I think, thanks. uh, off the top of my head, out of the ones we're going to discuss, the only one that actually eats you while you're alive, always, is a shark. Shark eats you alive. Yeah. Some of the other ones kill you first and then eat you. Which is slightly better, but better, still not yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> Alligators and crocodiles drowned you first, usually. Also not great, but yeah. yeah but at least you don't like experience the... Being chewed, yeah. Being chewed up yeah. by them. Right. Although if an alligator gets you and starts spinning, or a crocodile starts spinning, it'll... Cause they, it'll, it'll tear you it'll shit tear off. It'll tear you off. Yeah. A lot of times what happens is is that if you fell in a bunch of cro in, in, into, a, in, into, into a body of water with a bunch of crocodiles, they'd tear you apart fighting over you. Yeah. So Woohoo, fresh yeah, meat. Yeah. Yeah. I saw I was at the alligator farm in St. Augustine when I went there. Yeah. And whenever they feed the gators, like everybody gets really excited because they have a lot of alligators there. And they have some crocodiles too, but all the alligators that they have are like in one big central um habitat. Like it's this big huge swamp essentially that they built inside the thing. And so you can go and watch them feed the gators. And the guy comes with a like a wheelbarrow. And it's got, they usually give them like um, weasels, I think, like shaved weasels, yeah, rats, stuff like that. And so he does a show for all the people. You're on like this raised, you know, walkway around the swamp. And the alligators know what time feeding time is because they hear the guy like coming down with the, with the thing. And all the alligators come from everywhere, yeah. for, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And they're all like coming to this one spot. And so he's like over there, like slinging the and the and the alligators. You don't really think of alligators being able to do this. They can climb, and they can jump real high, like out of the water. Now are the weasels alive? No. Okay. They're, Why are they they're shaved just to make. Well, them well, yeah. I think they just like make them easier. Make them easier like they're swallow. skinned rather. Skinned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. All right. Then that, you're talking about uh, it's part of the fur industry. Yeah. 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 It's what's what's left over from the fur industry. So he's like, yeah. yeah, so he's like dragging, and like the alligators are literally climbing on top of each other and like making a little crocodile. You know, like, you know, like in, um, what was that zombie movie where like all the zombies were like piling on top of each other like that? Yeah. It kind of looks like that, except alligators. And they're all like climbing up. And some of them were trying to climb up the, um, like the, the platform that he was standing on and almost made it. So I was like, Jesus Christ, no thanks. I wouldn't like to fall in the middle of that. I don't think that's ever happened at the alligator farm that I know of. That, like, some kid was, like, because, you know, how some parents would be, like, hey, look, little Timmy, like, look at the alligators, yeah. and whoops, <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. like, drop it, get in no, the fucking water. I don't think it's happened there. It might yeah. have happened other places, but, you know what I mean, that, I, I can't imagine, like, fucking seeing that, or, yeah, that's awful. 
Uh, Zach said, funny you're doing this topic because I just came from watching old Happy Tree Friends videos. I remember those. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, are you going to talk about the monkey that ripped that woman's face off? Well, no, because he's not a man-eater. And, yeah. and two, um, I actually wanted to do a separate show about chimps that were raised as humans or that, you know, yeah. humans raised. Yeah, it wasn't a monkey. It was a chimp. Chimpanzee. Yeah, it was a chimpanzee. Yeah. And chimpanzees are not monkeys. And that's not, the only, apes. that's not the only one that's, a, that's attacked a, a human. Uh, there was one where, you know, just bit a dude's face off, bit his crotch off. He lived for a while. I think he lived, yeah. Yeah, because they'll go um, for your nuts. Yeah, your nuts in your well. face. Yep. <clears throat> and he didn't really know that guy either. It was just, they were there visiting a chimp that they owned there. They, they kind of raised it as a child. And they went there for its birthday. They had gave him a cake and everything. And it, it got out. That one and some other males. It was a big old big male, and he grabbed the dude. He tried to go after the cake, I think, first, and uh, dude got in the way. Dude got in the way of that chip. That chimp just chewed him apart. And he lived though, but that chimp really wanted that birthday cake. Disfigured, yeah. Well, actually, I don't think it took his face off. It took most of his fingers off. Yeah, and, I remember and, that. And his nuts, and his nuts and his dick. Yeah, took off. yeah, it tore his genitals off. Yeah. Which, like I said, um, yeah. I don't think they put it back on. He's just that's the way he is now. Chimps will do that. Imagine that. Uh, and a lot, yeah. And some of the ones that they even raised, well, they even tell you like if you're going to raise a chimp like for Hollywood purposes and stuff like that, they usually use females because they're yeah. a lot more chilled out, or they can only um, use them up to a certain age. Like yeah. once they go through adolescence, forget it. Yeah, got all that testosterone. They got to send them like to a yeah, all to that a all that thing. chimp testosterone. I got to look into that. What, are you gonna inject that into yourself no, now? No, it might. But I, <laughs> He's like, I mm. <laughs> no. I just wanted to know. Is what are you it, gonna tear my arms off? No. <laughs> I want to know is 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 it, is it the same compound? It's probably the same as human. Know. It's probably the same. I don't know. It's just that uh, they probably have a lot of it. Scary. Probably have a lot of it, and they're not that smart. They're, you know, so they can't control it. I guess. Yikes. Yeah. American Military 100 said, awesome shirt, Jenny. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't get to wear this as often because it's long-sleeved, but it's actually, like, kind of cold in Florida. It's cold. It's, chilly, yeah. it's cold for Florida. For here, yeah. It's, like, it's in, in the, the 50s. It's in the 50s, which is, like, woo, it's winter time. Yeah. Like, we might only get a couple of these. I actually got this from Killstar. They have a whole Dario Argento collection. I don't know if it's still up there, but they have, like, some really cool pants that are kind of, have the pattern, like, um, the Suspiria wallpaper and shit like that. It's pretty rad. They have, like, a bunch of cool shit. They had a dress that was, like, from uh, Suspiria, and it was kind of, like, lime green. It was pretty awesome. Why is my phone ringing? I don't know. I don't know. But it's me calling you. Uh, well, obviously, yeah. but it's nobody. Uh, Gramther says, Tim Treadwell was eaten alive, and he filmed it bite by bite as seen in Grizzly Man by Werner Herzog. Yeah, that's, um, his girlfriend got eaten, too. Yeah. I always kind of, I've seen parts of that documentary. I can't bring myself to watch it. Even though I know... Well, they have the audio of the attack, yeah, right? The I've complete audio. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like I kind of started listening to it, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. It's like I can't unhear this. So. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. No. I mean, it's just like his bunch of bunch of like, no, no, no. Like a bunch then, of screaming. And screaming, yeah, he was. Screaming. But I think, well, I think she it would be screaming. worse for me because it's like I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If it was just like didn't have any context, it wouldn't be that bad. But it's like I know what's happening and I can picture it. So she it's started like, screaming too. Well, I guess so. She was screaming through the whole thing, but then it yeah, got her. Would. It got her after him. Yeah, that's. Ugh, that's I guess awful. she didn't run. Well, maybe she was trying to help him. Yeah, I think she was. But, well, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you'd be mad if, like, a bear started yeah. eating you, and like, I was like, bye, good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's, there's, that was a grizz, and there's just... I know, there, but I'm just it saying. It was evidently a huge one, and there's just nothing you can do. Well, I, I know that, I'd but... expect you to fucking run. I probably Although, I probably wouldn't be able to, yeah. you know? I mean, the, my, I think my first instinct would be to try to help you. I would have been yelling, run! He probably, <laughs> I think he did tell her to run. Uh -huh. I think he did tell her to run. Yeah. He probably did. Yeah. But... Yeah, Unforeseen just said he kept screaming for his girlfriend to just run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, she stayed and tried to help. Stayed That's, and it cost her her life. And it, and it ate her. Yeah. But. Had she actually gotten some distance away, they probably would have let her go. I know, but fuck, man. Can you imagine like living with that? Yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to live with that, to be honest. Yeah, because I think I did remember him fucking telling her, yeah. tell her to run, run. Because like I said, you can yeah. never unsee that. It's like, right. hey, a bear ate my boyfriend like right in yeah. front of my face. That would be fucking awful. I would just like never be able to... I would never get over that. that was he really was funny. pushing it, though. I know, He but... was going up and just meeting any old grizzly that he saw, yeah. pretty much. They're, and the, old, the one that he saw and says, I don't know, I don't like that guy. And he goes, if I get eaten, 
going to be that one. And that was the one. And that later was on. the one that ate him. Later on, it was that because one. yeah, he was around them enough that yeah, yeah. he knew their personalities. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that one's that one's an asshole. Yeah. Turned out he was right. I think he was he was old and weak. Yeah. For a bear, so he wasn't getting. If I remember correctly, he wasn't getting fed regularly. Yeah. He was on. It was a bear on the edge. Is a bear on the edge. Yeah. Well, when they're when when they're in their prime, they're not real desperate. Yeah, and as we'll see, like a lot of these very famous man eaters, um, not all of them, but some of the ones after they killed them and they found out what the deal was, like autopsy them or whatever, a lot of them had been injured in particular ways that made it so that they couldn't really hunt their regular prey anymore, which might have yeah. explained why they started preying on humans. Because some of them preyed on humans, like, specifically. And we're not kidding, because some of these, like, animals killed hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. Um, Slasher Fred said, long ago, there was once a railroad construction that was being stalked by two lions. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, and the 1996 movie, The Ghost in the Darkness, is a biopic about it. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, and there, there was that, and then there was, a, um, like, a pride of lions, also, that killed a bunch of people. Um, Danny Rowling said... There was a Texas bar owner, I remember hearing about this, who had gators on the bar's property, and he would occasionally feed his employees or girlfriends or dogs, uh, cats, etc., until he got caught. Yeah, like there were alligators underneath the bar. Didn't they? Yeah, they made a movie about him, right? Yeah, Toby Hooper made a film about the guy. Yeah, I thought he did. He'd feed girlfriends to, to, the, to the alligator? Well, I guess if they get pissed him off, they're like, yeah, yeah bye, babe. Damn. Just, yeah. Well, alive or it must have been dead? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Slash Fred said, I believe the movie was called Crocodile Danny. Oh, no, Eaten Alive, 1976. Oh, yeah, 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 Toby Hoover's Eaten Alive. Well, I don't think we reviewed that. Maybe we should, because I think that's on Amazon Prime, actually. I was thinking about watching it the other day, matter of fact. But, uh, because there's another movie called Eaten Alive that I think is a cannibal movie, but that's two different movies. But, yeah, that one is kind of about the crocodile thing, or the alligator thing. He was gator. It was gators, right? Yeah, because it was yeah. Texas. Um, yeah, he fed, fed them alive to the gators. Damn. He wasn't fucking around, I guess. Yeah. Jesus Christ. What did he feed his girlfriend to the gator for? I mean, nobody does anything to deserve... Well, I can't say that. If you're, yeah. a, if you're a serial killer, yeah, just, yeah, throw him to the gators. Well, the girlfriend probably but it's like, other than that, it's just like... Did the girlfriends know that he was feeding people to the... Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the girlfriend knows. Of a serial killer knows what he's doing. And then she, That's ends, crazy. Up, she ends up in his sights. We gotta do a show on that. Yeah, that kind of... That should probably have a whole show. Yeah. Somebody was mentioning earlier, um, oh, Gramther said, word on the street is Jimmy Hoffa was fed to pigs no. at a farm in Michigan owned by no. mobsters. No, Although I've heard that they that is a decent way to get, because pigs, you don't really think about pigs because, you know, bacon and, you know, Wilbur and everything. Yeah. But, um, but pigs are actually, if you throw, like, a person in there that can't get away, like, into a bunch of pigs, they will absolutely eat a person. The best lead, the, the, the best lead that, that was the most plausible was what happened to Jimmy Hoffa is what they normally did because they, they had done it to other guys the, the guys that they suspect killed him they shot him they, they got him alone he didn't know that they were going to kill him he thought he was amongst, a, a, around friends and they shot him shot him in the back of the head with like a twenty-two. they wrapped him up they put him in the trunk of a car old jalopy and they drove it to the scrapyard where gangsters worked, they or owned the scrapyard. I don't remember. I know that they worked there at least. They took the car, crushed it, and then melted it. They crushed it into a three by three cube with him in it, and then they melted it, melted it down into the damn forge, and that's what happened to him. Yeah, you wouldn't really be able You'd to never find, find, any find trace him again. Of right, yep. Yeah, which is that's a good way of getting yeah. rid of and him. And they didn't have to hide it from the employees because it was the just employees. Just that was their. Oh, it's one of those cars. Okay, yeah. You know, it's one of those special it. cars. One of the special cars, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what they did. One of the special cars. There's nothing left. He burned off in the slag. Yeah. Vaporized. The thing about pigs, it's interesting because I was just reading some articles about man-eating animals. And there aren't any specific pigs that went man-eater as far as they know. But as recently as 2019, evidently, there was a woman in Texas who was attacked, killed, and partially eaten by a bunch of feral hogs. Hmm. Right. I don't know what the situation was there, but it's just like, I just saw that on the Wikipedia page and I was just like, holy fucking shit. That was only like a couple years ago. So it does happen. So pigs are 
not the gentle little uh things are mean little yeah they're they're yeah. kind of assholes yeah and they will absolutely eat you <laughs> they will eat you if given They'll the eat your own mother if given the opportunity yeah i've heard farm stories <clears throat> where a guy will go in there and slaughter an old sow well that's the mother to the to the other pigs that are in there and they'll see him fucking kill her kill her <clears throat> um cut her up and then barbecue her yeah all right and then pigs begging for some of that meat. It's like, oh, my delicious yeah. mom. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that smells so good. Because uh, there's something about them there. They're like cannibals. They just, <laughs> something about them. I mean, you know, I don't think you could do that with a dog. I think if dogs saw you kill another dog, especially if they knew it, and then I mean, you started cooking nobody, meat. I nobody do that experiment. I don't think they'd ask for any food. They're like, mm, no. I don't know, though, because dogs will kind of eat anything. So I don't know. I think that, yeah, maybe maybe it just go. Maybe they no longer become the friend or the mother or whatever. It's now just food. Yeah, Smells maybe they don't really think about it. They don't like, think about it that way. Because look, know. man, I've heard about, because I know people that, uh, that have both dogs and cats as pets, and they're like, dogs will absolutely eat cat turds right out of the litter box. They do not <laughs> give a single shit. Yeah. So. Well, it smells good. It smells ter- terrible. And they, they, <laughs> they, they, they think it smells good. Which I'm just kind of like. Cats and dogs like stuff that stinks. Okay. For some reason. Well, I mean, the thing about it, though, is that cats aren't really that bad. It's like, yeah, the, you know, our cats will eat, like, stinky-ass fish. That's kind yeah. of their favorite thing. But it's just like, oh, they wouldn't eat their own poop. No. Or their own vomit. I've no. never seen them do that, but I've seen dogs do that. Yeah, I've seen dogs at the farm. <clears throat> horse will fucking drop a fucking load, and the dogs will run up and just eat fresh steaming horse apples. Yeah. Like, well, that was good. And, man, you could, don't eat that. It's like, stop it. Yeah, You're and disgusting. It's hot. <laughs> The Ew. funny thing is, is that it's, 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 it's sterile. Out of, a, out of a horse, it's pretty sterile. Because, you know, it's they don't just, eat meat. I, it's just hay, but it's I know. Yeah, hay. It's hay, and it's... Gramther says, my dog eats her turds as soon as she drops them. Really? She eats her own turds. Damn. Well, what's the point of, like, even pooping them out if you're just going to eat them again? That's ridiculous. I mean, the whole digestive system evolved, yeah. like, to kind of forestall that possibility. You're supposed to be getting rid of that, not eating it back they, yeah. up again. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> How have they lived so long doing that kind of shit? Man. I can't see them doing that in a while. That's what I mean. Maybe it's a domestication thing. Yeah. Like us. I mean. Yeah. They just start getting strange behavior. That's crazy. They get civilized problems. Teddy Rowling says second harvest. <laughs> That's so gross. Oh my God. I'm getting so grossed out right now. But yeah. I mean. Yeah, the the alligator guy's name is Joe Ball. That's right. He's in my topic list. Joe Ball, the alligator man. I think I've actually put him in the poll a couple times, but it doesn't win. So it is it is on my topic list. I thought it was. But, uh... (laughs) Crypter said, we feed her gourmet dog food, so they're gourmet turds. Okay, so maybe they they taste even better the second time. Who knows? (laughs) It's me, Jay, said their stomachs have crazy stomach acids. They can handle eating shit. I guess so. I mean, it doesn't really seem to have any they can eat detrimental carry. effect. They can eat carry. Yeah, I see them eat road kettle and yeah, shit like that all the carry. time. They get super excited about that. Yeah. Like, they don't even care how long it's been sitting there. They, they're a scavenger. They'll eat anything, I guess. Yeah. But that's fucking crazy. Like I said, I do kind of feel like cats will eat some gross shit, too, but they seem more discerning. You know? Yeah. Zach says, no, stop. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Well... <laughs> We'll save you some money. You don't have to buy dinner now because you're so grossed out that you can't eat anything. Should we go ahead and uh, start the first... Uh, yeah, let's start talking we, about oh, the first thing. Don't we have to do a shout out to our... Uh, yes, let's do a shout out to our sponsor, sponsor right. slash affiliate company, which is <coughs> Audible. As I've mentioned on the show many, many times, Audible is one of the world's, if not the world's largest repository of audiobooks podcasts and other audio entertainment uh so if you click the link in the description box you will get a 30-day free uh trial of audible and uh during that 30 days you can listen to as much stuff as you want to with no including uh, jenny's books including my books because all my books almost all of my books are on there in audio format yep so you can listen to all those if you Paranormal want Paranormal books. Among whatever. many other things. Because yeah. like I said, you can listen to a lot of stuff in True 30 crime. days. That's a long time. Yep. 
so yeah, and also if you do the deal, you also get one free credit to spend on whatever you want and you can keep that forever. And if you're already an Amazon Prime member, you get two free credits uh, that you can spend. And again, whatever you buy with those credits, you get to keep them forever. So yeah, uh, Audible, it's really cool. I use it, you should use it too. Please click on the link in the description box and full disclosure, we get a small commission if you sign up through that link. But yeah, it's Audible, it's awesome. Another way to support the show. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's talk about some man-eating animals. So we brought up Grizzly Man before. Yeah. Um, but here is a case. Now this actually happened in Japan. Uh, this was also a bear back in 1915. Now this just says brown bear. Uh, brown bear kind of covers, I kind of feel like that covers grizzly bear too, does it not? I think, I think are they slightly bears, different? I, I mean, I, I think different. the ones in Asia may be like a slightly different yeah. species. Yeah. Um, because, you know, here in Florida, we have black bears and black bears very, 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 very rarely attack humans. Very yeah. rarely. They're not super aggressive. Although it's the most common type to be attacked by, that's because they're around humans. Because that's because they're around yeah. humans all the but time. They're, they're mostly, they're not interested in humans, they're pretty docile. But yeah, they mostly would just go yeah. through your garbage cans. Now, if you yeah. like surprise them when you come out one morning, then yeah. yeah, they might they might attack you. But um, usually they don't kill you though. Yeah, they just um, drag you out, throw you, and then run. And then yeah, right? Uh, because they're not, they, you know, they don't seem to see people as food. So back in 1915, in Japan, there was a case of a brown bear that kind of went on a rampage just like in this one village, which is kind of crazy. Now, if, okay, so this is crazy. This is like a trivial fact that I, that I did not know. So if somebody asked you, what is the most dangerous wild animal in Japan in terms of how many people are killed every year by it? What, do, what would your answer be? Something kind of like, uh, some, probably something in the water. It has to be a land animal. It doesn't have to be. It can be any animal. Just any animal. I know, that, I know that people get killed by those giant salamanders, so they used to. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah. They bite you and drown you. Yeah. Especially if you're a kid. Um, so if it's not that, then I'd probably say it was a bear. Yeah? Nope. Dog? Nope. I don't know. Giant hornet. Okay, yeah, yeah. The Japanese yeah. giant hornet. They had him in Korea. Kills 40 people a year, yeah. okay. which is a lot for a hornet. Yeah. Those fuckers are big, too. Yeah. They're scary. Murder hornet. Yeah. They can, just three of them can wipe out an entire beehive. Yeah, they're assholes. You can see it, yeah. Big time. You can, they got video of it. Slow motion video of those things killing all those bees one by one. It's fucked and up. And just working all day to kill the entire hive. And they go in there and get all the honey they want. They're big. They had them in Korea. I only see dead ones, though. Hmm. You'd see a dead one, it'd be like that big. Huge. The head on it was like the size of a nickel. Fucking spooky. I think I would fucking pass out if I saw an yeah. insect that big. Yeah. Eyes. Eyes like it's making eye contact with you. <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big, they're bigger than a, longer than a June beetle, but similar in mass. Yeah. Remember the June beetle? Beetles? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is Florida. We got some big-ass bugs yeah. in here, too, but you know what I mean? Fuck, man. Danny says Bigfoots eat humans sometimes. I mean, maybe they do. You can't prove they don't. Granther says, we once caught our dog noshing on a used tampon she got out of the bathroom waste bin. Yeah, I've heard Damn. of dogs doing that, too. Damn. Like I said, dogs leave fucking anything, man. It's so gross. Mm. But, yeah, so even though the, the murder hornet, the giant hornet in Japan, actually kills more people than any other animal, um... The largest predator that they have there is the brown bear. And this attack that happened in 1915 was the worst bear attack in history. Uh, so, yeah. It took place in this little bitty village called um, Sankabetsu. I'm not yeah. sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I may have to co correct something, though. What's that? I don't think a bear is a predator. I think it's classified as a... As well, this one was. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's classified as an, as, a, as an opportunist or a scavenger. Yeah. Because they eat a lot of, you know, it's not like a, a lion that only hunts down. You know, the, the animals like that only hunt 
other animals and eat them. Bears don't do that. They, they will hunt down animals. They mostly fish and they fish and they uh, uh, berries and they'll dig stuff up and eat it. They're just like an opportunist. They tend not to be even grizzlies. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not about hunting shit down and killing it. Really, that's a side gig. This particular yeah. bear, I almost want to say that he did the shit that he did because of revenge. Yeah. Okay. Which we got the idea for this show to do the show from um, that show with uh, William Shatner, the unexplained. Yeah. They did a show about man eating humans, and they were talking about. I don't think we were talking about it on this show, but they talked about a particular. I think it was a tiger. Yeah, in, that, in Russia. Yeah, in Russia, that like a guy shot her, and then she tracked him back to his house and ate him. Yeah, because she was mad. Yeah. Uh, so it was this big long thing about like can an animal feel you know can like track and it took like a while for her to like track him down and she waited yeah. like outside his house remember that yeah like for three days or something like that till he came home from wherever he yeah. was and then she jumped on him like she was like he, you motherfucker you shot me he must have just grazed it yeah 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 but this one I kind of feel like okay so let me know if you think that's what's going on here because this kind of sounds like a revenge scenario to me so. This this village at the time, in 1915, was very, very small. So there wasn't, like, a lot of people living here. And it was kind of, like, still a sort of, like, pioneer, like, a wild area. And there was, like, a lot of brown bears in the area. Um, they didn't generally attack people or anything like that. But there was this big male bear who they later named um, Kesagake. Now, he used to come into the village and eat their corn like after they had picked it and like they had it like laying out and this stuff and he would come in and be like oh for me (laughs) and then he would start eating it so they're like hey bear that's our corn fuck off and so two villagers shot him and i don't know what part of the body they shot him in but it obviously it didn't kill him and he ran back to like in the mountains this is what year was this 1915 okay i'm trying to put together all right 1915 yeah all right they, they, they were using real small caliber stuff in Japan in those years. Okay. So it must have it must have been something like 22 long rifle. You know. I mean, Very they, weak. Yeah. I wasn't a hunting rifle. I, yeah, and I kind of feel like that was maybe the case with some of these yeah. animals. Because a lot of these animals like did get shot and then they come back and yeah. fuck people up. Yeah, a bear, a bear, a large bear could absorb a lot of 22 long rifle. Yeah. yeah, it would hurt. I mean, this was a big ass. Damage it it was this was a big ass bear. Too. Yeah. <clears throat> so, because I mean, you and you can see why the villagers probably thought this. They're just like, well, if we shoot him, even if it doesn't kill him, like you know, he'll be scared and he won't come yeah. back. You know what I mean? Um, that's not what happened, unfortunately, for many of the people in the village. What happened in early December of 1915? The bear comes back into the village. He walks into a house that belongs to the Ota family. Ota, yeah. Now, the the only people in there was, like, um, a woman. She was, like, the wife of the farmer and a baby. I don't know if it was her baby or if it was a baby she was babysitting. So the bear comes in, goes right for the baby, and kills the baby. Hmm. And then goes right for the woman and, like, starts attacking the woman. Now, she tried to, like, fight the bear off. She was, like, whacking him with fucking, like, logs from the fireplace and shit like that. But obviously this was, you know, this bear was, like, enormous. So it basically, like, dragged her out the house and, like, into the woods. So people hear all the screaming. They run to the house. There's blood everywhere, like, all over the fucking walls and shit like that. So all the dudes, like, they figure out, it's like, oh, that was that fucking bear. So they run into the woods, like, to try and kill the bear. Now they found the bear and they shot him again, but it still didn't kill him. Yeah, they're using twenty two or something like sixteen or twenty gauge shotgun, probably with bird shot or small pellets like that. I don't think Japanese civilians were allowed to own anything real powerful. Definitely nothing military. And their militaries then were using bolt action rifles. So it's this is a Japan thing. People in the United States had the had the ability. They, they had the weapons necessary to kill bear with with a single shot. But this, just in this story right now, this bear has absorbed too many rounds, which means that these people were undergunned pretty badly. They're just pissing the bear off. If it was something yeah, that's like, what it's, it's BJ just said. They're just pissing him off at yeah. this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like 
any small gauge buckshot, which they or or, or shot out of a shotgun. I, I wouldn't even hunt a bear with fucking even buckshot. I don't even think I'd. I don't think I'd hunt one even with a slug, shotgun slugs. I wouldn't really trust it. That's something. If you're gonna go after a large bear, you want a high powered rifle. You know, 308 or 762 at least. Just starting with that. You go up into seven millimeter seven millimeter magnum. You know that that'd be a good one for that. You know, 50 cal. You can get that. That'd be great for bear. Now, you could. They did hunt bear with um, cat, uh, fucking even even muskets. Okay, um, uh, both flintlock and um, per, uh, percussion cap rifles. But they were at least 50 caliber. Big, heavy lead ball. A lot of it was 54 caliber. <clears throat> it's low velocity, but it's a real heavy bullet. Moving slow. But it's soft lead, and it just smears when it gets in there like a hollow point. Just tears up. It'll tear up a bear. I don't think in Japan they, they allowed civilians to have anything like that. So they're probably using like buckshot. But real small buckshot. We call it bird shot probably what they're using for it's a fowler for shooting down birds they're tiny pellets about as small as a bb or smaller a bunch of them that will not penetrate a bear, a bear hide very well that'll just piss that bear off especially if there's any distance because it's slowed down you know nothing beyond 25 meters or, no you're up close with it yeah you'll bore a hole through it but that's deadly close on, on a bear an angry bear they're just under gun. They're pissing the bear off. They're I'm making just, it worse. Yeah, I'm just going to leave They're the making it worse. Alone. How about that? Yeah. Unforeseen says, apparently they did make a movie in 1990 about this called Yellow Fangs. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to see that. But yeah, so so they shot the bear. I'm guessing this is the third time. But of course it didn't kill him. Like I said, it's just now it's just making him mad. Now the animal runs off again. They did find the woman's um, partially eaten body, which is fucked up. He kind of buried it a little bit because he's saving it for later. Yeah, come back for it. Yeah, which, you know, that's fucked up. So then later on, I don't know if it was the same day or the next day, but the bear comes back into the village and goes back to the same house again. And I guess some of the villagers, like, saw him going in there like, oh, shit, we're going to go over there and get him. So, like, all of them go into that house. But the bear somehow eluded them and got out of that house and went to another house that had people in it, like another family called the Miyoke family, and started mauling everybody in there. Yeah. Um. Now... Some of the people did get out of the house, like, holy shit, and they, like, ran out of the house. Two little kids got killed and a pregnant woman. They abandoned the women and children. It's, yeah. yeah it's like the guys were like, bye, good bye, luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> good oh, luck fighting man. off the bear, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is fucked up. Yeah. And so, a brown bear can get pretty big. This one, um, I believe he was 10 feet tall yeah. and weighed almost 900 pounds. That's the size of a grizz. So, yeah, he was a big fucker. Yeah. He was a big fucker. And, the, and they said he was much bigger than uh, the other brown bears in the area. Yeah. And he was obviously much angrier and hungrier than the other ones as well. Because apparently there were a lot of brown bears in this area, and they hadn't really, as far as I know, like bothered anybody. But this this one... Well, he's like, also wounded at this point. So. Like I said, it might have been because yeah. he was mad that they drove him out of the village for eating their corn. Yeah. And so when he's like, wounded, I'm they, just going to come back and yeah, fuck him up. Yeah. When they're wounded, they'll eat things that they wouldn't normally eat. Yeah. So he's desperate. You guys are hurting me. And I'm like, you're going to pay. He's eating. Yeah. Because they got to heal up, man. They need the protein. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. And he's like, yeah. well, these are the dude, these are the people that shot me. Yeah. So I'm, eat them. I'm just going to eat them. But it's yeah. meat's meat. So, yeah. So all the, the guard people, or the other people in the village, they come back. Obviously, they see two dead kids and like this dead pregnant woman with like her fucking feet is like torn out of the belly and shit oh, like that. Be, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's fucking horrible. Um. So, yeah. So his, what's his body count now? That's six people. Six people he's killed. And at this point, most of the villagers were like, fuck this. And they just, like, left. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're like, we're, we're, we don't want to deal with this. It tells me they were basically unarmed. Yeah. They so stand and fight. At this yeah. point, um, I guess there was a dude in the area that was kind of known for hunting bears. Like, he was kind of famous for it. And so he comes to the village to see what he can do about it. And his opinion was that this bear had probably killed people before. Like I said, maybe he was like a serial killer kind of bear or something. Now, at first, he was just like, yeah, I don't want to get involved, but he did eventually get it. It wasn't just him. He had, like, um, some of the other villagers, like, did help him out and stuff. And so he did actually finally manage to kill the bear uh, a few days after uh, those, because this was only, like, a week 
where this whole like rampage yeah. happened. So yeah, so after they killed him, uh, like I said, he was about ten feet tall, uh, eight hundred and forty pounds. That's how yeah. much he weighed. Um, Try to go up against that. Yeah, no. That's thanks. not man meat. That's bear meat. That's <laughs> yeah. That, eight hundred pounds. Like I said, I don't want to get eaten by a bear either. Yeah, yeah. It's you know what I mean. That's just that sounds awful. Yeah, how they kill you is they usually grab you by the throat and just crush it. Yeah, bite a big ah. piece out, or they grab you by the head or the throat and they just start crushing, gnawing, pulling the fucking skin off the head. Usually, yeah, canine teeth going through your skull. They're not chokers. They're chewers. Yeah, bad which, way of going. That's yeah, that's got to be a bad way to go. Yeah, and if you want to see like a fi- like a good fictional movie about a bear attack. Please see the movie Backcountry, um, because I feel like it's really underrated. And there is a horrific bear attack in that, and it looks really realistic. Like the um, the special effects are really good. It's basically, I think it's partially based on a true story, but it's like a husband and wife, or I think um, I think he was actually gonna ask her to marry him, like on this camping trip. So he was gonna be like engaged or whatever, and um, and he gets eaten. Yeah. by the bear and then the rest of the movie like pretty early spoiler alert like pretty early on in the movie and then the rest of the movie is her trying to escape from the bear because the bear is like chasing her yeah and so it's kind of based on a true story yeah. but it's really good it's a good yeah. like suspenseful movie yeah if you if you have if i had a choice between eaten by a bear and eaten by a lion or tiger i'd choose a big cat yeah like, i would too because they at least like kind of go for your throat and like yeah. kind of they choke, choke the out. life out of you before yeah they'll they put that some, wouldn't be fun either they but. hook you with some fat they hook you with some claws so you can't run. They pull you in. They get on top of you. They grab you around the throat and just bite. And you lose consciousness. They'll hold you like that for a long and time. And then they'll eat you. And they'll, now, a lot of times while they're choking you out, their buddy's trying to get a bite out of you. Yeah, so that might be you another know, factor. You're alive. And the other one's trying to take out part of your leg, you know. But Nature sucks, yourself, yo. <laughs> if you're by yourself, or excuse me, if, if that lion is by itself, it's going to be a more humane death than a bear. Bears aren't expert killers. They're they're more like a scavenger, and when they're pissed off, they're just gonna bite and crush and pull and whack at you. Yeah, and whack with their claws. They're gonna try to crush your head and crush your neck. Yeah, and you, you know, well, hey, we got proof that dude, that dude, the grizzly man, he screamed for a long time. I heard it. So Which it, that's it, why I didn't want to yeah. listen to the whole thing because yeah. I said I can't unhear that, and I'm yeah. gonna picture every single second yeah. of it. No, they're not. You. They're not efficient killers. They take. They take their time. God. Yeah. Yeah, that would. Oh, that would be horrible. Yeah. That'd be horrible. Danny says that old woman that recently got eaten by a gator in Florida while walking her dog along the water's edge must have not grown up in Florida because who does that in Florida? Yeah, it's not a great idea. I have seen people doing it, but honestly, I mean, I was born here, so I just assume. That any body of water of any size probably has at least one alligator in it. And so I'm just, like, not going to fart around down there. By you just it. go out there at night and take a high-powered flashlight and swing it across that water. If, if there's alligators out there, you'll see glowing eyes looking back at you at, at water level. They're really reflective eyes. Yeah. If you don't they're see any reflections, everywhere. they're everywhere. If you don't see any reflections, they're not in there. They don't like a body of water if it's real small. If yeah, it's small. They'll be in there maybe a day or so. Yeah, because they move around moving like from around. pond to pond. Yeah, but if it's kind of a a large size, like a a decent size lake or something like that, they live you, in it. Yeah, yeah, there's gonna be lots of them in there. So yeah, don't take your kids right to the edge. Don't take your pets to the edge. Even in Disneyland, one got eaten. Yep, a kid did. Yeah. So they let the kid get down there by the by the water. Just don't. Seriously, it's outside Florida. We're serious. Lot. Please don't do yeah. that. Please outside don't do the that. Disneyland parking lot, and you go bam. And they won't, they won't go after an adult. But Not they, usually. They'll go after a kid or a dog. Or, or a, a dog, dog or, or a cat, cat or something yeah. like that. Yeah, they absolutely will. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't usually attack a grown person unless circumstances were a particular way. They're not about any trouble. But Alligators are actually pretty shy. They're not, yeah. It's like they're they're frightening animals, but yeah. they're not super aggressive. Now, no. crocodiles, on the other hand. Yeah, a little bit different story. Um, they will eat people all day long. They don't care how big you are. Alligators just want to, they want to live a chill life and they want an easy prey. Yeah. They just take you to the, they just grab you and take you to the bottom and drown you. And then they'll hide your body for a week or maybe three days in the Florida sun and you'll soften up a bit and then they'll eat you because they can't chew. They have to swallow, they can tear things into pieces and just gulp it down. Yeah, they're just like, they can't really chew. They don't have any teeth like in the, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, their jaw only opens and closes. Yeah. And it doesn't grind. Yeah. So, so they they prefer stuff to be kind of soft. They let it rot a little bit. That's why it's if the it's the thing about the bite strength is they have really good bite strength going down, yeah. but coming up they don't have that's that's why you can yeah. usually kind of hold, hold their, their mouth, mouth shut. shut. Yeah. Like with your hands. You can also tape it. And yeah, because if you go to like the yeah. alligator farm or something like that, they'll let you like pet gator like small gators and stuff, and they always have like duct tape around their yeah. mouth because they can't open it. You know. What I mean? You can also befriend an alligator. A lot of people have done it. I mean, Sounds strange. I I wouldn't. They but. can get used to a particular person, and they'll let you pet them, and they'll come they're like, to your you're house. Probably and leave. not food, unless yeah. I'm real hungry one day yeah. and need a snack. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> you, you can befriend one in certain circumstances. It's kind of weird. And justice for me said, I live in Melbourne. Oh, that's not far from here. Uh, saw a decent sized gator in a ditch. They really are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I saw one running across US ninety two, booking it, almost getting hit by a car, and I was just like, look at that. That is the most Florida thing I've ever seen. I saw a snapping, alligator running across the I saw highway. A snapping turtle, four feet in diameter, walking down the sidewalk. Like they're <laughs> yeah. old Sanford company. Yeah. Just a nice, yeah, gr groom community. He was a big, yeah, he was a big guy. Gigantic, f four foot diameter, flat snapping turtle, just yeah. walking. Do, going do, do. going moving, to another, going to another pond, another pond, because there's yeah. little ponds everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, you just, I just assume. I just assume that if there's a body of water, that it probably has an alligator in it. It's probably safer to assume that because there probably is one in there. It's not probably not going to pop out and eat you, but I wouldn't take Pookie out by it, like or or Bambi, or take a kid by it. No way, no way. Mm -hmm. Unless the, you checked. Yeah, and the thing about it is that I used to go to Alexander Springs a lot when I was younger, which is in Ocala, and they have. Um, the one spot where you can swim is kind of netted off a little bit. There's fish and everything. Um, but if you go in the other area that's like where it's canals and stuff, there's alligators all over the place. However, alligators do occasionally get into the swimming area. Yeah. Um, and I was there a couple of times when that happened. In the daytime, they're mostly on the bottom sleeping. Yeah. They can sleep for hours and hours and hours holding their breath underneath there. But in the nighttime, they're up at the surface. You see the yeah. eyes. Yeah. But yeah, I was at Alexander Springs one time, and I was just in the swimming area, and then I glanced over, and like right over there, I'm like, oh shit! Yeah. And they were just kind of like, um, hey, alligator, might y'all might want to get out of the water. <laughs> Normally, they try to keep them out of the swimming area, but you can't, you know, keep them out. There's not a, you know, there's not a wall or anything like that. It's just kind of like a net thing, and if they can kind of get out and walk around, so it's not really that big of a deal. But yeah, um. So yeah, so this they so they got this bear. Apparently, they cut his stomach open, and the story goes that there were human remains in his stomach. So that's how they, so. He was yeah, because yeah. he was eating people. Um, and some of the people that had actually survived the attacks by the bear um, actually died later of their wounds. So his yeah. body count was actually much Infections higher. And shit. Right. Um, and after this happened, uh, the rest of the villagers said, "Fuck this place." Maybe thinking it was cursed or something, and they moved out. Um, so I don't even know if there's anybody living in that town or if that town even exists anymore. Because, like I said, it was just like a little bitty village. This did, was yeah, did you find out who killed it and how? Yeah, I said who killed it. It was um, a just a bear hunter. I don't bear know. What, I don't know what his name was. Okay, so he, but they had him come from like another village. He yeah, was kind he, of known for hunting bears. He came equipped with the right right freaking rifles. What happened? Yeah. yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna because he did kill it. Yeah, like because I think the first attack was on December 9th, and then he killed it on the 15th. Yeah, so it was only like six days. It's like in between. Um, yeah, and Justice for Me said there was a guy who befriended a croc down in South America some time ago. He was famous for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, but it takes a long time. You yeah. Have to feed them. And they got to get used to you. And then you have to be able to get in the water with it and uh they're underneath the water i've seen dudes underneath the water petting them you know they got snorkels on and uh the alligator the alligator lets them do stuff you know he'll roll it up roll it over upside down rub its belly underneath the water you know so you can befriend one and it's all but it's only that one dude it would might attack somebody else you know even though like i said they're not that aggressive usually especially to other things in the water they're aggressive to things on the bank yeah that's anything on the bank is food. Well, they, they catch stuff on the water too, but I don't know, fish and shit. 
Danny says there was a homeless guy who went swimming in Florida water just to retrieve a soccer ball and got killed by a gator. Yeah. Definitely a Darwin Award right there. <sighs> yeah, I mean. Depends on how big they are, too. You don't need anything that bad that's in the water. Just uh, get out of there. There are truly huge alligators, and I wouldn't trust one. But Remember I mean, that video that went yeah. viral of that one just, like, strolling through the golf course? Yeah. It's and just, for a while, the alligator was so big that everybody thought it was fake. It was and real. then they were like, no, it was real because they had one from, like, a bunch of different phones and, like, a bunch of different angles. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally the size of a dragon. It was fucking it's, enormous. It's, yeah. And he's just, like, walking dead through the fucking... Because yeah. there was a lot of people golfing that day, and they were yeah. like, holy shit, look at that. Yeah. It was... Yeah, I thought it was fake, too, because I'm like, oh, my God, that thing's so fucking huge. Yeah. Alligators don't get as big as crocodiles, but... <clears throat> They get still big. They it's get, still, I mean, they, they're still big enough to like fuck I don't think they know out. how big they actually get. Actually, yeah, they might not. Because there's fossils of ancient ones that were fucking huge, man. Almost twice the size you have now. They don't seem to die of old age. Uh, they've never observed one dying of old age. And an old one, the older they get, the bigger they get. The more food that they have, the bigger they get. Um, and an old one at 100 years old is just as lively as a young one that's only a few years old. So I don't think they die old age. They die because they get so big they can't feed themselves, or they get so big that they attract attention and people kill them. But I think maybe back in prehistoric times, those things could maybe live to maybe 200 years old and get huge. And get, like, enormous. Yeah, and they were, there was plenty of fucking protein, lots of big animals around to eat, so they could just continue to grow and grow and grow. Like, the, those old... Those old fossils of a fucking 30-foot alligator or crocodile type thing. It's probably just a regular alligator or crocodile. A modern one could probably get to that size if it's if, if it's it around long for 200 years and eating a shit ton of protein. Yeah, it'd probably do it. But an alligator would never live 200 years in today's environment. Yeah, it's just too, it's too it. built up and yeah. Too built up. People would see that shit. Once it got to about fucking 15, 16 feet, they go, that thing's a menace. And it can't hide. They they kill it. But I don't, you know, it's the same thing with gar. I think gar used can get real big. Well, same thing with like this big ass catfish too. Yeah. Because remember how big catfish used to get. Yeah. But I know Jeremy Wade. Every now and then he'll catch like a bit like an enormous one. Yeah. But I don't I'm, think they're as common as I've they seen used to be. Photographs from the 1920s of Louisiana alligator gar. It's a big old fucking eel with a head on it like an alligator. And I've never seen a fucking gar that big. Yeah, you know, I think the biggest one days. I ever saw was like four feet. Maybe. Yeah. No, these things were fucking like 12 feet long. Yeah, I've never seen one that big. So it's just like, what the fuck? I don't, I don't think in modern times they can get that big because people, too many people fishing now. But in the 20s, those things, those things may have been 150 years old in the 20s. You don't yeah, because we don't know how we don't long. Know how long live, right? And yeah. that's kind of the thing. We've been talking about that with crocodiles and alligators like reptilians. But it's like I'm not really entirely sure they know what the outer edge of their lifespan is. Yeah. And like you said, and some fish are like that too. Like if they have sufficient food and they're not, um, you know, wounded or they're not hunted or anything like that, then they can just keep on growing. They just grow to fit the food supply. Right. They're not like mammals where they get to a certain yeah. size and stop. Right. They just keep on getting bigger as long yeah. as the environment is. And they don't get feeble. Right. A hundred year old alligator is lively. Like he's not, he's like, he's not old. He's just big, but they require a lot of protein every day. Yeah. You got to eat a lot to maintain right, the body yeah. that size. And uh, chances of him making it over time and in, in the modern world, getting his daily protein to continue growing. Uh, no, he, he's not gonna be able to find that amount of food anymore. I think that's kind of the case with a lot of animals, whether yeah. it's just kind of, like I said, just alligators, crocodiles, sharks, mm -hmm. um, catfish. I think, like I said, because we used to watch the, you know, Jeremy Wade's show, River yeah. Monsters, that he was always looking for those big ass catfish, like some of which did kill people. Yeah, it's big enough to swallow you. And it was big enough to swallow a person. And he did actually catch a couple yeah. that were easily big enough to swallow a person. There are woodcuts from the European Middle Ages of them showing their bountiful harvest. And they'd show big piles of fucking uh, uh, wheat loaves of bread next to it, chickens, big a cow, and right next to it, a fucking catfish. But it's the same size as the cow. You go, that's got to just be a representation. If uh, Jeremy Wade proved, no, that's how big that catfish actually was. Yeah, because he caught some almost yeah. that size. Because in the medieval era, there was no 
rod and reel. The only way they could fish is with a net. Yeah. And those things were living in places where you couldn't use a net. Yeah. So fish could live to be hundreds of years old, and they got that big. Catfish the size of a fucking cow. Nowadays, you're only going to find it something like that, like in Amazon. Yeah. Where there aren't any people. And fucking catfish big enough to swallow a man. And they're still around. Yeah. Um, because he specifically goes to places where there are reports of people being taken in rivers by something yeah. that they think is a big ass fish and he wants to go and find yeah. out if it really is a big ass fish all those men and in a few cases that one show in particular where he hauled that catfish out of the water i was like holy fucking yeah. shit it was enormous yeah all these uh medieval stories about lake monsters and lake demons it's catfish that's what they're talking about yeah they got huge in the medieval period which is funny i never really thought about it before because yeah. shit man i grew up eating catfish i'm from the south and it's like, we used to catch them sometimes, but they were little, you know what I mean? It's like, They're you know, young, it's yeah. like, yeah, like, well, we'd catch catfish, like, that big. And it's like, so it never occurred to me that there were catfish out there that, like you said, were as big as, like, a cow. Big as a cow, Like yeah. you said. So, yeah. um. If they live long enough, they got enough food. So when I see that, yeah. when I see him catch one, I'm just kind of like, oh, no. Matter of fact, what Jeremy said is he said the medievals could not get catfish that big by using a net or... They didn't have rod and reel, and they weren't getting them with the net. They were doing it by dredging the fucking lake, the pond. Right. They'd fucking, not dredging, what do you call it? Emptying it. Yeah. They, they'd dig a, a channel, and fucking, and then when you got up to the pond, you broke through the wall, and all the water would drain out to low land, and the water level of the fucking pond would go down to only a couple feet, and it would, you could then, a whole bunch of people could walk in there and just take all the fish. Well, they would do that, and there'd be like four or five fucking catfish in there, maybe 200 years old each. Fucking the size of cows. Yeah. Feed a whole bunch of people. And then all the little ones were actually like younglings, the shit that used to just like this big. Yeah, the shit yeah. like we were catching. When yeah, they, they yeah. could catch those with nets. That's the only ones they were catching. They weren't catching the real old ones. Now, another fish that I've seen, real big ones, and this is an ocean fish, is a grouper. Hmm. And I didn't realize how big they got either, but they get really, really big. A tuna can get huge. Oh, yeah. Tuna get big, too. Which, like I said, when I was growing up, I didn't realize that because, you know, tuna comes in a can. Yeah. So so you just think of them as, like, can size. But, no, tuna are, like... Tuna the size of a cow. Yeah, they're fucking enormous. Yeah. They're fucking enormous. Uh, Yeah, Danny says, I saw a horse from Gainesville, Florida stomp an alligator in the head on YouTube. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. A horse wouldn't put up with that. Well, a horse doesn't have they to put like up things. with that. Yeah. They're like, no, no, no. Yeah. I saw a video of an alligator coming out of a lake, and it was in Florida. I don't know where. And a little kitty, a little black kitty, like ran right at him and jumped on his head. It was like, no. Yeah. And then like ran away, and the alligator was like, yeah. what? And then he went back in the water. <laughs> yeah. That cat was not having it. Yeah. But she just like jumped right in his head, like, pow. Yeah. I Go I away. That one. Yeah. Yeah. You talk. Yeah, Danny said, I've seen man-sized fish swimming around in abandoned quarries where people would swim, and fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I'm not I'm not swimming around with any animal that's big enough to eat me. No thanks. Yeah, it's things like catfish. No thanks. Um, Even if they don't eat you, they could drag you underwater and yeah. you would drown. Yeah. And then they have the other things kind or of like Or just eat your head. Yeah. Arapaima kill a lot of people. Yeah. They Strike do. them, it hits you in the chest. Jump out of the water, hit you in the chest, it kills you. Yep. Because it's a big animal. Yeah. And they can move fast. And they're assholes like that. Yeah, they're they like, fucking fly out of the water, fucking hit you right in the chest, it kills you. I wonder if they're like down under the water Stop. going, hey, I'm going to get that one right there. They computed the energy. It's the same as being hit full force with a fucking sledgehammer right in your fucking solar plexus. Yes. Yeah. And it will kill you. Yep. Yeah, some people have gotten killed, yeah. like, which is a ridiculous way to die. Yeah. But, but they aim for you. They See, do, they yeah. Do like, purpose. they're assholes. Yeah. It's fish are assholes. Mm-hmm. And Justice for Me said, what's crazy is the Greenland shark. How do they live for centuries? Yeah, that's the thing. They don't really know. I don't really think they know how long sharks live either. There's you know no I mean? reason but people should buy, die at 80 and 90. They're looking at that. And they said aging is, in humans, aging is like, like an error. An error. They, believe that it, they, they believe that they should be able to correct it. But I'll tell you what. If they figured it out, they're not going to tell you. There's only going to be very rich people know about that. Because they can't have people that can live... 300 years well i'm sitting there thinking well it'd be nice to live that long but then i'm just kind of like man i'm just gonna have to make money and work all that time fuck that yeah you know it'd be nice if i was like a billionaire but 
other than that, it's just like, oh boy, 300 more years of like struggling to pay bills. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, yeah, High Desert said, I used to go to catfish restaurants in Oklahoma. They were good, although spiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like catfish, but yeah, you have to kind of prepare it right, though. You gotta know how to cook them, yeah. Uh, he said, remember all those Killer Bee movies from the 1970s? Yeah. yeah, that was a whole thing. Like, The Swarm was kind of the biggest one. But there was also, there was a British one called The Deadly Bees that was on MST3K, which actually isn't bad. It was a moral panic. They were having Africanized honeybees moving in. So racist. Yeah, well, <laughs> the Africanized honeybees were killing all the regular honeybees. Yeah. And they, that's probably already happened by now. Now, now. All Although, like I said, I think it was like a lot of things back then. I think it was exaggerated. Per exaggeration, bro. Yeah, I think it was an exaggeration. All right, let's go back to the next one. All right, so uh, we talked about a bear. So now let's talk about some big cats because I kind of feel like most of the man eaters, um, the famous man eaters that have like really high body counts, gonna say the largest percentage of them are big cats, lions, tigers. Uh, there's a leopard in here. But they, they seem to be the ones with, uh, with the highest body counts. So let's talk about the lions of Najambe. Now, this happened in Tanzania in 1932. Now, the crazy thing about this situation was that this was not just one lion that decided, hey, humans are delicious. I'm going to snack on them. It was a whole pride of lions that decided it was going to start eating people. Hmm. Not entirely sure why. Uh, so the legend was, at the time, like when this first started happening, the villagers thought that the lions were being controlled by uh, the local tribe's witch doctor, whose name was Matamula Mag Mangara, I think was his name, because they had kicked him out of his post as witch doctor, and they're like, oh, he's mad at us. So he decided he was going to send all these lions after it. Now, the, I mean, obviously that's silly, but the lions did kill a shit ton of people. So you, you can forgive them for, like, thinking that maybe that was the reason. Because, you know, what would the reason be otherwise? So basically, yeah. So these lions would just come into the village and just, like, fucking eat people. And, like, what are you going to do? It's a whole fucking pride of lions, right? So they just come in the village. They're eating people. People got so scared of them they wouldn't even like they thought there was something like supernatural going on so they wouldn't like talk about them because they thought if we talk about them they'll show up like fucking candy yeah, speaking you know them. what i mean speaking right it's like yeah it was like that like they thought it was like some kind of black magic like i said they thought it was the it was the witch doctor doing it so they kept attacking now they think that this pride of lions killed between this is crazy 1500 and 2000 people in this time period damn which is crazy. So this might be actually the worst animal, like animal tax ever. And it was a bunch of lions. I mean, it wasn't like just one. So but it was still, a whole culture of it eating was, people. Yeah, they were learning it from each other. Right. They're a lot smarter than you think. They learn by experience. They see another. They see one of their one of their friends do it, then they do it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah, fifteen hundred people, two thousand people. They're not entirely sure how many get killed because this was in nineteen thirty two, but that's still that's a fucking lot. Yeah. Um, now, eventually, some of the lions were killed by a hunter named George Rushby. Now, he killed 15 of the lions. I don't know how many total were in the pride, um, but it was more. It was substantially more than 15. But he did manage to kill 15 of the lions, uh, at which point the rest of the pride were like, okay, I guess it's getting too hot around here, so we got to move on somewhere else. I don't know where they went after that. But they all, they left after that point. But they had to kill 15 of them to do it. So um, the villagers, though, decided anyway they were going to give the witch doctor his job back just in case. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just so. Why didn't they try that first? Yeah, I'm not really sure why. Okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. But uh, but yeah, so that was, that was kind of a famous, like I said, fucking 2,000 people. Holy crap. Now, somebody brought this up earlier. This is also Lions. And this is very famous because they made a movie about it in 1996 called The Ghost and the Darkness. Um, the reason the movie was called that was because that's what they called the two lions. Now, they talked about this on the Unexplained, the William Shatner show that we saw. Now, this happened in 1898. And the British had started um, building a railway bridge over a river, the Sabo River in Kenya. Now, over the next 
nine months, the people working on this railroad started getting attacked by two man-eating lions. Uh, they later found out that the two of them were brothers. I like that they kind of showed when they did the reenactment on the William Shatner show, they actually showed them correctly as the, they were male lions, but they didn't have manes because this particular breed of lion that's like from around this area, the males don't have manes. Cause I thought that was weird too. Cause I was like, why? And I think in the movie they had manes though, but so they don't. It looks better on camera. I guess so. I guess so. But they didn't actually like in real life. So they said what would happen at first was that the two lions would come into the camp at night when everyone was sleeping and they would drag people out from their tents and then just drag them into the surrounding bushland and eat them. Um, but as time went on, they started getting more bold, I guess. And then they would just come in and just like take them a little bit out of the tent and then just start eating them right there, like in front of everybody. Um, you know what I mean? They wouldn't even drag them into the bushes. And again, just like in the prior case of the Lions of Najambe, um, because this was happening, like a lot of natives and stuff like around the area thought that these were not actually lions, but there was something supernatural going on. Like maybe they were possessed by demons or something like that. Um, one of the things, one of the stories that they had about it was that the lions were reincarnations of local kings who were trying to get the British out of the area. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes total sense. Well, because apparently that's kind of a thing <laughs> yeah. in Kenya, like, or yeah. in that part of Africa and Eastern Africa, that, um, that kings can be reincarnated as lions. Mm -hmm. So I guess that wasn't as weird as it kind of seems, like at first blush, you know what I mean? So, um, so as I mentioned, these two lions were called, they named them the ghost and the darkness. And not surprisingly, a lot of the workers on this railroad were like, fuck this shit. Uh, I quit. <laughs> and they fucking left. So like hundreds of them left. Cause you know, every night, like the lions were coming into the, into the village and like just dragging people out of their tents and eating them. You know what I mean? This is one was, was this the one that was following the, uh, the railroad crew? Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. This is a railroad. He was just pick. They were just picking them up. Yeah. They were just picking them up. Word of this was like getting back to England, and it was in the newspapers all the time mm -hmm. that they had to stop stop the building of the railroad because some dudes got eaten, and there were all these yeah, they amazing had to stop. figures were coming out. Like you know, five guys got eaten this week, and people back in in England weren't sure if this was true. I think even the king, the king of England, I think was. Question, asked questions about it, didn't he? Like, is this real? Is this a, and yeah. They sent somebody down there. Because it sounds there. Yeah, it sounds crazy. Like they sent somebody down there and verified, said, no, the fucking lions are eating people. Oh, it absolutely happened. Yeah, it was eating. Uh, these two, it was two lions. Yeah. And they would just come in and they'd be like, hey, snacks and tents. Yeah. And they just kept dragging people out and eating them. And like guess, I said, a lot of people quit. Guess the king of England, England might have suspected it was just fake news. Yeah. Which that exists. Well, that exists. Like I said, that existed back, back then. Days. It was worse back then. Worse like I said, then. people bitch yeah. about it now, but it was way worse back then. And there was yeah. like no way to check anything. Yeah. Either. It would just but, totally make up a fucking story. But this absolutely, it. this absolutely did happen. Yeah. Um, now, what ended up happening, like after a bunch of people got eaten, was that the chief engineer on the project, uh, who was a dude named John Henry Patterson, he's like, well, we have to find somebody that'll, that will kill these lions. Um, he actually almost got killed by the lions himself. He got attacked, but he got away. Um, but he ended up shooting one of them. So, so he's, you know, he stepped up. He actually ended up shooting one of them. And then uh, two weeks after that, he actually got the second one. By the time that they were shot, they had killed 140 people. 140 railroad workers. Worked them over. Yep. Just drag them out and eat them. Yep. Um, they also were able to track where the lions had been staying. They had like a cave like that they'd been sleeping and they'd been living in. And uh, reportedly, they found a bunch of human remains and some, like, torn up clothing and stuff like that in there, which is nice. Yeah. And some other shit that they dragged back from, like, the other people's tents, which is pretty macabre. Um, I think the cave is still there. I don't know if there's still, like, bones and shit in there, but that's, like, kind of fucked up. And the thing about it, and I think they said on... Somebody mentioned that that just in the, um, in the chat just now. Um, big cats will sometimes kill just for sport, apparently. And they think that was maybe the case with these lions because they killed a lot of people, 
but they didn't eat all of them. So they were thinking that maybe they were just killing them for shits and giggles, you know? Um, or they got disturbed. Maybe. They were going to eat it. Well, they'll kill things and then they'll hide a kill. Yeah, let that's soften, true. Let, let it soften up and come back a few days later. Usually they hide in a tree, though. Yeah. Where nothing else can get it. Because these ones, they I think they did up. eat or like partially eat some of the people, but some of them they just dragged out and killed them and then they didn't eat them. Yeah. Now, I think well, they... I think what it is is it was a kill by opportunity and then they stash it and they go, we'll go back and eat this later when, when we get hungry. Yeah. Because they're kind of like an ambush predator, kind of. So a target of opportunity comes by. Well, I'm not hungry now, but I'll be hungry later on, maybe tomorrow. So I'll kill this one now, and I'll, and I'll eat him tomorrow. And I'll stow him over there, stow him over there for later snack. Right, so that's probably what they're doing. And then maybe sometimes they never come back And they to can't it. come back. It's, yeah. it's, sometimes Some it's kind of like when you go to the grocery store and you right. buy a bunch of produce and then you don't end up using it. Well, other things happen and they have to fall. You know what I mean? Like the, the group moves. Yeah. Like, well, there's no time to go back now and go eat that guy that we got stored. we got to follow the, the group. We'll just find a new guy to yeah, eat. Yeah, we'll just get eat a new one. <laughs> Which is fucked up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like they're, they got to eat too. It's like yeah. it's not like a moral question for them, but it's still like pretty messed up if you're on the other end of that. So, yeah, so they made the movie The Ghost in the Darkness about this. Um, as somebody mentioned, somebody mentioned that, um, yeah, because their pelts are actually in the Chicago, uh, the Field Museum of Chicago, and they said they'd gone up there and seen them. I saw a video of a guy <clears throat> basically getting eaten by lions. You, uh, you can find it online. <clears throat> Dude jumps into the lion habitat at a zoo. I don't remember if it was China or India. Might have been China. And, and he, he jumps into a, in, into the habitat with a bunch. Of, I think they were I think they were African lions, and he walks right up to one. There, he, there's definitely something wrong with the guy. Well, yeah. And then I think he starts pleading with it, making hands gestures, and that lion's looking like, please don't the, eat me. He's what, like, what the fuck? Yeah, the lion is like, he's like, hey, another male lion my lunch comes guy next to Looking at this guy, what, what's this dude doing in here? And then one of them said, well, fuck this, and he just fucking <laughs> knocked the dude over and grabbed him by his head. You are now my Grubhub order. Yeah. <laughs> his whole fucking mouth covered his head. He screamed, and it just started walking with him. It ran with him up out of the view of the camera. You could hear him screaming for a few seconds, and then that was it. I mean, what did that dude think was going to happen? I think he's had some kind of, it was either suicide or he had some kind of mental problem, something like that. But Man, if you're going to do that, it's like if you're going to yeah. off yourself, like there's probably yeah. way better ways to do it than that. But they killed him. I don't, they probably didn't have time to eat him because, you know, the, 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 the staff was going crazy. Well, yeah, everybody's like, oh yeah. my God. That was like, on him, though, man. He jumped down. The that's kind, yeah, that's kind of his fault. It, you know, it, it, it's kind of a different thing. Like if you fell in there, like accidentally or something like that, it's just <laughs> like he just went in there deliberately, then you're kind of. You can find an edited version of it on Sorry. YouTube. I mean, don't jump yeah. into a lion enclosure. Yeah, and go up and try to talk with them. He's, look, he's talking with them, and then he starts pleading. You know, if I could talk to the animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah he thought he was Doctor Doolittle. Starts pleading with the, pleading with the animal That's what and it was. doing this and ma moving a lot. You know, and he had his jacket in his hand. It's just fucking crazy. Yeah, he's probably. The lion was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> Yeah, like fuck this. I'm gonna eat. The other one's standing next to the other lion. There's two of them standing side by side. They're looking at each other like, "What the fuck?" I guess we eat this, you know. Fucking, yeah, argh. it's like, well, he's not hidden belonging here. I just grabbed him by the head. He's like, argh. at least if we eat him, he'll shut up. Yeah, yeah. Screamed like a woman. I well, mean, didn't even scream like a man. Screamed like a woman. Most people probably would if they were getting. Uh, their if head I'm gonna scream, I like... scream like a man. <laughs> he screamed like a woman. It yeah, was high we'll, we'll see you get eaten by a lion. And no, then no, we'll, no. Then we'll, you'll see what we. we no, we'll high see what you it scream was like. high pitched. <laughs> woman scream came out of him. Danny says, "Hippo versus grizzly, who would win?" Hippo. Probably hippo. Sheer mass say. always wins and fucking... High Desert them. said hippos look kind of derpy, even though they're dangerous. Yeah, they're uh, very dangerous. It, yeah. Uh, they, probably they why there are no be, killer hippo, hippo movies. Yeah, and then like below that would be that bison. It's one of those Yeah, you wouldn't African think... Because hippos, buffalo. like I said, they look so cute and they're all fat and everything and it's like no. they look kind of friendly and there's cartoons of them, but it's like yeah, they, are, they will absolutely fuck your shit up. And they're mean and they're intelligent. Tremendous bite force. He just crush you with those big fucking teeth. Teeth are like flat molars, like bricks. And they just, argh, just crush you. And they swallow you. One of my favorite hippo facts yeah. is like one thing that they like to do is they, is they poop in the water and then like they swish their tail like that to make the water all poopy. Yeah. 
for whatever Smoke screen. for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why you can't see me. Yeah, it's my shit screen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's like funny to me, but I'm just kind of like, that's super disgusting. But yeah, that's what they do. Uh, yeah, it was injustice for me that said when I was a kid, I saw the two lions on display in Chicago. Yeah, they because they were like uh, pretty famous. So um, what? Okay, so the thing about it, they mentioned this on the William Shatner show that when they killed the lions, one of them was injured, right? Like its tooth was broken or impacted or something like that. So they suspected that one of them, because its tooth was broken and it couldn't hunt its normal prey anymore, that it started, you know, wanting to go after like, you know, softer, easier targets, which would be humans, and apparently talked his brother into helping him out. And then I guess, like, the brother was just kind of like, hey, these guys are pretty delicious. Okay, this is a good plan you got going here. Because humans are much easier to eat than their regular. I don't think he talked them into it. I think they were just a pair. They grew up together. Like, yeah, they were were brothers. Yeah, one one of them started eating humans, and the other one just followed. He goes, yeah, you can eat these too. He's like, yeah, they're they're also made of meat. And they don't run fast, so it's easy. And they don't have any horns, yeah. and they don't have right. any anything. They don't have any armor. Yeah. There's not much meat either, so they just eat more of them. Yeah, it's like, but there's a whole bunch of them, and they're just yeah. laying there. They're just laying right, out on yeah. the ground. That's how they're looking You can at just it. pick them up. It's yeah. like being at a Chinese buffet. Yeah. Just eat more of them. <laughs> like little dumplings, yeah. just like laying there. It's like, you know. You know, like, humans don't really think of themselves in those terms, but that's what you look like to a wild animal. You just look like a nice, soft little dumpling laying out there on the ground yeah people don't understand nature everything (laughs) nature is about animals trying to kill each other even even plants are trying to kill each other some indirectly and and directly some of them some of them are like fucking parasites feeding on other plants other ones are just trying to out compete the other plant next to them with making by choking out the root system and stealing more nutrients and more stealing more sunlight everything is is either eating things or going to be eaten by something. So <laughs> nature is about murder, really. <laughs> They're all killing each other. Yep. And um, they don't really see it that way. They're just kind of like, hey, I'm trying, just trying to survive. Eat, yeah, food. Yeah. So and everything they eat is they're denying food from to something else because they ate it and another animal didn't. So everything imposes, like I said, it's part of the Nietzschean philosophy. That they're, we're all guilty. <laughs> we all impose on everything. Yeah, I mean, you can't help you it. Can't, you can't help it. Well, even Buddha, there's Siddhartha Gautama, the original Buddha, said the same thing. He says, just by existing, you're imposing. Okay? Because you have to eat things, you're breathing air, you're just, you're, you know what I mean? Other people have to feed you if you get too old. He says, the ultimate, the ultimate uh, state of being is to not impose, to be totally... You know, not, you have no footprint on the earth. So that means die. That's what he did. He, he starved himself. That's why they would show him his fat. He was fat with wisdom. But they've, if that guy really existed, I'm not sure if Siddhartha Gautama actually existed, or if he was. I a, kind of doubt it. Probably a composite of a bunch. That's of what I. Men. That's what I thought. Right. I thought. Um, if that dude li- did live, according to the stories, though, he was an old man when he did that. So, yeah, he's just like ah, eh, fuck. So he know. lived his life. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, yeah, go away. Ooh, drinky time. Drink, yeah. Hi, Desert said, imagine living in prehistoric times. You would have no gun or even bows and arrows. All you'd have is a club. Yeah, must have sucked hard. That's probably why they didn't live all that long back then. I mean, they didn't know any different, so I guess it wouldn't be that bad. But still, yeah, if I had a time machine, I'm definitely not going back any time like that. Actually, if I had a time machine, I don't think I would go back into the past at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe for like a day or two, but... Nah, no thanks. Especially not before there was like flush toilets or electricity or anything like that. I don't think so. I don't think so. That doesn't sound like any fun at all. All right, so uh, so we have some other another story of a big cat. Now this wasn't the only uh, man-eating leopard. There were several of them in, but generally around it, uh, in India. But this one was the most famous, and I believe had the highest body count. This is the Panar leopard. Now, leopards are actually, of the of all the big cats, they are the smallest. But, um, again, they will still fuck up your day. And there are several examples of man-eating ones. So, um, the thing about it, too, is that they think that leopards are probably, 
one of humans oldest predators like they've found you know ancient hominid bones that have like leopard tooth marks on them so obviously they were eating humans going way back you know what i mean so um but, I mean, they generally don't become... It's a lot of animals don't become specific man-eaters in the sense of, yeah, they'll eat a person if there's a person there and they're hungry, but it's very rare for an animal to specifically target humans to eat. You know what I mean? But there have been a few, and several of them are leopards. So the worst man-eating leopard of all time was, as I said, the Pinar leopard. Now, this was a male leopard. And this was in a particular region of India called um, Kumeon. Kumeon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, this was like early part of the 20th century. Now, uh, he's called the Panar Leopard because, you know, the place that he was, that was the Panar province. That was where he killed most of his uh, victims. He is thought to have killed, at least as far as they know, over 400 people. Making this leopard the second most prolific man-eater in recorded history. Now, again, it seems like this is a very common thing among man-eaters. They believe that this leopard had been injured somehow by a hunter, shot or hit with an arrow or something like that. Um, and the injury was such that it couldn't hunt its normal prey anymore. So it decided it was gonna start eating nice soft little people because it's easier. So, that, like I said, I kind of feel like that's a pretty common trope, especially with the big cats, that they, they get injured somehow and can't hunt, you know, zebra or caribou or whatever it is that they normally hunt. And so they're like, ah, well, we don't like these little pink things like running around, but they're easy to catch, I guess. So they'll just like eat those. Now... This leopard, um, as I said, as far as they know, it killed over 400 people. It was eventually killed um, in 1910 by Jim Corbett. Now, we're going to talk more about Jim Corbett because this motherfucker, he probably needs an entire show like all his own. Because, and it's funny because when, he, when I said that we were doing a show about this, somebody came on and said, please tell me you're going to talk about Jim Corbett. Um, and I was like, yeah, I am because he killed several of the world's worst man-eating animals. Um, so he's kind of a badass, you know what I mean? And he was the one that killed the Pinar Leopard, matter of fact. What year was this again? This was um, early 20th century. Okay. So you know what I mean. 1900s. 1910, he killed yeah. the Pinar Leopard. That's yeah. when this kind of adventure was still available. Early <laughs> 1900s. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's still around nowadays because there's still man-eating animals around nowadays because we're going to talk about Gustav later, the crocodile. Early 1800s was cool because back in those days you could actually you weren't sure that things like gorillas act were a re, were a reality. They they thought that was a mythological creature. Uh, they thought that maybe there were islands out there that might have fucking dinosaurs on them because because they didn't have satellite photography. So you might just find an island that's just that like, fuck it. It's got brontosaurus on it. You know you don't know. Anything was possible in the early 1900s. You couldn't prove. You know they didn't know. They, they didn't know what was in the Amazon. They, now they know from, you know. All the mystery's gone. Yeah, all the mystery's gone. I don't think that's true. Satellites but, can see. Sat but no, to here, a large extent, yeah. Here, here's something very interesting. Satellites can now see subterranean ruins all over South and Central America. Yeah. You can't see them on the surface because there's fields over them. Right. Where they're planted or just or trees and shit. So a lot of times they're underneath farms. But there were massive cities, kind of like the like the Inca and the Aztec and all that, throughout all that. And there seems to be some in the Amazon. That's a, that's incredible. They're just far away from any modern habitats. I kind of okay. feel like if you know what I feel like if I had another lifetime, like to go back to school and stuff like that, I would love to get into all of the shit about Mesoamerica, like yeah. all the cities and shit like that that were there because I feel like there's so much there that people don't know about. Yeah. Because it's in the United States. All the archaeologists are interested in damn Europe and e ancient Egypt. Which, yeah, bit, I get that. That's that's, that's, that's where kind of where the glamour is. I get antiquity. it. Sure. That's where they all want to... But they're not even looking at the United States. There's fucking ancient ruins all over the United States. 
fucking. There's weird shit here. There's weird know. shit. They here. don't know what the fuck it is. And the, the Mississippians, the Mississippians, not not me, but there was a Missis- <laughs> not Mississippian yep. civilization. It was Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, and um, Tennessee. That area. There was ruins there. You can see them through satellite now. But uh, and now we're talking seven, eight, ten thousand, fifteen thousand years. You know, that, that Graham Hancock fucking shit, you know. There were earth pyramids and But the more they mysterious kind of, channels and fucking The more they look into it, I feel like they're finding like massive cities and shit like yeah. that in Mesoamerica that they didn't even know existed. Yeah. Like twenty, thirty years ago, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Like that were just as big or bigger than anything that was in the like, comparable stuff from Europe at the time. Yeah. Which is fascinating. And it's like, I would love to get in on the ground floor. A lot of people don't know history. They definitely don't know, like, Mexican history. They don't teach it, and it sucks, man. It's like, I even grew up, like, you know, I grew up in Florida, and I got a decent education, and they mostly focus on European history. Like, I think we did a chapter on Florida history, and, like, we talked about that. Um, You know, obviously I had a couple classes in American history, but they don't really talk about, even when they talk about ancient history because yeah. i had a couple classes in that too they don't really go much into they don't really go much into mesoamerica they don't talk about asia much either i really recommend reading a book that has excerpts of hernan cortez's fucking reports back to spain and his description of what was happening with the aztec and the other uh indians that the aztec had basically forced to pay tribute a lot of people don't realize it, but when the Spaniards showed up, and Cortez wasn't the first guy that showed up, the, 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 I think the first two missions, those dudes never came back because they, they mutinied. When they saw a Mayan city or an Aztec city, they were fucking petrified because they were bigger than anything in Europe. And they were painted, according to Cortez, in red and turquoise paint, with huge baskets the size of three-story buildings filled with heads, with skulls, human sacrifices. They had open cannibalism happening. I mean, I would shit myself, too. And these, were huge, the and these were huge, yeah, advanced no. cities know. with advanced knowledge and, and literature and number system and their version of technology. <clears throat> they uh, were up there with ancient Egypt. All right. Yeah, it was 1500s, but it had been that way for thousands of years. Yeah, I just They'd feel like they don't for know years. much about it. Right. You know what I mean? And it was all erased over time by the church, the Catholic Church, because they they They're had to re- doing that they shit. wanted to replace the Aztec gods with Christianity, which was actually very similar to the Aztec gods. Yeah, it's not that different. No, really. the 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 Aztecs converted easily because they were like, all right, close enough. Yeah, they were like every <laughs> every icon in. Catholic, in the Catholic religion with their saints and the Virgin Mary, and there was kind of an Aztec equivalent to that. They were very similar. Well, as I mentioned, yeah. human brains are, they only have so many, I mean, they're amazing, but there's only so many ways they can go, only so many channels they can go down. Yeah. So usually, even if there's cultures that are a world apart and have never had any contact with one another, you will find some similarities yeah. in their belief systems. It's just because that the, of the limitations of yeah. like human imaginations. Yeah. You, they come up with the same shit given the same circumstances. Those, you know the, what I mean. Those Aztecs were fucking smart. They had one of the most advanced calendars and an advanced number system that we haven't really figured out until recently. Um, they could do mathematics. They could do all kinds of stuff. With, they were doing mathematics and, and evidently primitive or the beginning parts of algebra. But they didn't even have... The Arabic numeral system. They they used a different system. But Pretty sure they didn't have zero either, did they? I, no, did they I think not? they did say that they had zero. Oh, maybe they did. That it was the. It, they think that they did have zero, which which is quite a concept mm-hmm. of the number zero. But uh, they could do computations. They they. What was what's sad is that all their records were burned. They burned them all. Yeah. And there were um, Spanish. Friars that had learned, or monks that had learned all this stuff, they were sending letters back to the Pope saying, "Look, you can't destroy this knowledge. There's there's a lot of literature and stuff here. These people, you know, you can't let this stuff be lost." And he, they were writing books and sending it back to the to the Catholic Church, 
to the Vatican and try to preserve as much as possible. But it still exists. Those books exist, but they're they're all in the Vatican. Yeah. They let people see them. But most of the information about that civilization, it was, and most of it that survived was in the hands of the Vatican. Uh, but they couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't set, uh, save it all. Dresden Codex. Codex. They saved that. You which m- had to do with the calendar. It was the central? Yeah, I'm, we're talking about Mexico now. Yeah. Okay, I, know. I was gonna say that um, you might actually like to. I'm not sure about now, but years ago, I went to uh, the. I think it's the South Florida Museum in Tampa or St. Pete. And they have a huge Mesoamerican yeah. collection in there. They have some cool shit. Yeah. When you're talking about, there's no such thing as primitive civilizations. They're all about the same. The, those people were just as intelligent as us. They had just had different traditions and different religions. That would, but they were basically like like modern people of today. Uh, sanitation was good. Um, an ancient Roman could go there and he'd trip out on a lot of stuff. But they, he, you know, but they were as advanced as say Romans. The Romans were pretty fucking advanced. We didn't start thinking like Romans until the early 1900s. I think the, I think the Romans were basically kind of mentally ahead of people in the 1800s. Romans were a lot more worldly, a lot more sophisticated. Yeah. High Desert said the Portland Zoo had videos of their baby hippo, who looked very friendly. Probably not so much now. Yeah. Yeah, baby hippos are super, super cute. But, yeah, hippos are dicks. They will fuck you up. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're talking about leopards yeah and we were talking about jim corbett so even though the pinar leopard which was shot by uh by jim corbett is the uh most famous and the one with the highest body count like i said he killed 400 people uh there were more than one leopard in india at the time that killed a bunch of people there was another one called the kahani man eater uh who killed about 200 people and there was another one called the, I'm sure I'm pronouncing this wrong, but the Rudra Prayag Maneater. His thing was that um, there would be like all of these pilgrims that were going to this Hindu shrine in the area. And he would like wait, like lie and wait. And when they were going to the, he would attack them and kill them. So he killed about 125 people. That one was also killed by Jim Corbett. Because like I said, Jim Corbett was like yeah, one of those dudes. What, you, back in the old days when... You, you know, everyone was fascinated by, like, adventure and feats of daring do and all that. Um, yeah, he would go out there. He was the dude you called. It's like, we have this man-eating whatever, and you need to come out here and, like, solve this problem. He'd be like, I'm on it, and he would come out there and kill him. He killed, like, a bunch of man-eating animals. That's actually normal ambush predator yeah. behavior. They know the, migra- the migratory uh, habits of, of prey. So people walk into temple. Yeah. He knew that timing. He knew when they were yeah, coming. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, there's... If you wait right these, here, they're going to walk by. All these little pink snacks are going to be walking right yeah, by there, and I'm going to jump right on them. Yep. Um, now, according to some, talking about leopards, even though they are significantly smaller than lions or tigers, um, they are thought to be more agile and maybe smarter. Um, so basically, a lot of people that hunted them or that knew about them thought that they were maybe more dangerous and one of them even said if the leopard was the size of a lion it would be 10 times more dangerous Hmm. than a lion um now jim corbett also said something about leopards because he had killed some man-eating tigers as well which we'll get into in a bit but um they said he said at least in his opinion or his experience he said tigers usually become man-eaters because something happens to them. Like they get an illness or an injury or something like that that prevents them from hunting their regular prey. And so they start hunting people. In his experience, he found that leopards became man-eaters after they had scavenged on human corpses. Implying that they had developed a taste for human flesh. Well, they, they, he learned that you could eat them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so let's talk about this Jim Corbett dude for a minute, uh, because somebody asked me to kind of go into it. Now, he was actually, he was born in 1875, died in 1955. Uh, He was actually born in India, but he was British. Um, Hunter tracker, later naturalist, and he wrote a bunch of books as well. And like I said, he hunted, he was kind of the guy that you went to for hunting, mainly tigers, mostly tigers and leopards, um, and mostly around India. He was a colonel in the British Indian Army. And, like I said, he was the guy that you called, you know what I mean? Um, 
and he wrote a whole bunch of books about it. The funny thing about it, though, is that even though he killed all these man-eating tigers and leopards or whatever, later on in his life, he actually stopped hunting and became a photographer and became a conservationist, um, saying that we have to protect India's wildlife, you know, from yeah. uh, being exterminated, which is kind of funny because that's he spent his entire career. Exter but I mean, he was exterminating them because they were eating people. Yeah, which actually, you know. some of the greatest contributors to conservation are the are hunters. Yeah, because they understand the balance of nature. You know what I mean? That if you take animals, you got to make sure that you're creating more animals. Uh, so you know, my dad did that too. You know, fucking on the land that he had hunting rights on, you plant stuff that deers eat, and you let them grow in large numbers on your uh, on your claim. Uh, and then you just cull off the top. Um, so it's kind of like having cows in a pasture, except they can come and go. They're, they're, they're wild. You're just trying to attract them by planting things. Now, you can't bait them. It, you, know, would mean, you, mean, you can't leave food out. That Game wardens will get you for that. But you can plant ryegrass. That, they like ryegrass. You can plant acorn trees. They eat those. But you're never. You're, the idea is not to hunt the animal out. If you hunt them out, then you don't have. You're out of food. You're trying to get them to breed and become numerous. Um, because this is happening in Mississippi, you know where I'm talking about, and um, it's 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 rural, and um, it can support a lot of deer. But so can it, the suburbs can support deer too. Man, fucking, we moved out of a fucking high end suburb. It was filled with fucking deer. I like see pets. deer all the time. They're like pets, yeah. I'd be out on the, I'd be out yeah. walking on the, on the jogging trail out there, yeah. and it's like, hey, what's yeah. up, deer? They just be walking across uh, the fucking. Deer street. can thrive in fucking. They're all over the place. In, in human. Occupied one was sitting in our tumor. backyard one yeah. time. They'll thrive in uh, a suburb because people aren't hunting them. Yeah, they can just you hang out. It's not a hunting area. Because everybody's like, oh, deer. Right. Now I've seen people freak out on on um, Facebook when somebody shoots a lion or uh, some kind of big African game, but they don't understand what's happening. In those African parks, the numbers of those animals are controlled because it's no longer, it's now the modern world. Those parks can only support so many animals. They know what the footprint of that animal is. So when the lion population starts to get too big, the park rangers allow guys to pay to come in they have to and cull, cull off the oldest lions to make room for the new ones that are, have been born. So people don't realize that, you know what I mean, fucking, they think, well, that's an endangered animal. Yeah, it's endangered, but it, but that was under a highly controlled thing. They've killed off all the old ones. And in nature, they die when they get to that age anyway, you know. Because they're living longer than they did because uh, it's, the place isn't as wild as it was anymore. It's kind of like a park. Yeah. So they know how many animals the environment can support. They're not going to let that, those hunters go in there and shoot them all. Just a couple. And then the money that they that those hunters had to pay to cull those lions now goes back to the park to pay the park rangers and to help protect the... It's all part of the, the balance, nature's balance, you know. You can't have too many lions or they'll all starve because they'll eat all the damn gazelles. There's not enough of them, you know. They know what they're doing. It's unfortunate, but that's the way n nature is. Nature is everything trying to kill each other. Yeah, which, like I said, it's... You don't really like to see that. I don't yeah. like to see that. Yeah, you're like, man, he had to kill that lion. Yeah. <clears throat> but they can't have too many lions. Or yeah. there's not enough I mean, food you can't really have any too much of anything. Yeah. Well, like I said, that's kind of the thing where, you know, sometimes you get into a situation where an animal gets introduced into an environment where they're not native and then they yeah. kind of take over. Yeah. And then it's just like you gotta kind of have to kill them. Yeah. Even if they're cute. Um, and you know, to like happened in Australia with all the bunnies and stuff like that. And it's like, nobody wants to have to kill like cute little bunny rabbits, but that's their job in nature is to be eaten. That's why they reproduce so much. And the thing that's about it is that if you have too many of one thing, they're yeah. going to fuck up the whole, yeah, they fuck up the balance, the whole system. ecosystem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, another thing is, is that 
lions, tigers, and the big cats are endangered in the wild, but overall they're not endangered because there's a shit ton of those in captivity. I mean, remember the fucking Lion King, whatever that dude? There's lots of those places. There's one three miles from here. Yeah, we have one like right by our house. with fucking lions and tigers. He's probably got 40 of them. Yeah, he's got a bunch. Yeah. They, it, you can breed them and people have them like pets in certain countries walking around inside the damn living room. I mean, here you have to have a certain license. But you have like, a license here, yeah, right? Yeah. But that guy has, he has like a big, huge enclosure yeah. with like big, huge concrete walls and stuff. Yeah. So those endangered animals, like those African animals, they're endangered in the wild, but they, they won't ever go extinct because people own them. <laughs> they got them. Weird, but true. but the thing is, is that even ancient Egyptians and ancient Romans kept lions as pets. They make good pets. I've seen videos of them in people's homes, in, in India and shit. I mean, playing with the children and everything. The thing about it, like you yeah. follow that channel where they have it's not a lion. It's a is it a panther? It's a puma. It's a puma. Yeah, the Russian guy that has a puma, and a and a and a black panther. A That's puma. right. It's not a puma. It's a it's an American mountain lion. Oh, okay, it's a mountain lion. Which is a, which is a type of puma. And he loves that man. He, you yeah, know, he sleeps with him in the bed and everything. And he sits there and just... And you're like, man, that's dangerous. And the thing is, is that animal grew up with those people. He takes it outside. It's got it on a leash. It puts clothes on it because it's cold. It's, it's Russia. It insulated jacket. Let's him play. Uh, Messi is his name. <laughs> name of the channel is I Am Puma. Yeah. You'll see him. Him Which, and his wife. He gets up in the bed and sleeps with him. They make good pets. Which, like I said, you know, the thing about it is that I think people would be like, well, yeah, but it could eat your face off. But I'm like, well, a big dog could eat could your face too, off. Yeah. yeah. So. It will kill you. Yeah. But they like make it, good if it was in a dog. A, yeah, it's a good dog. Yeah. And like, or a Rottweiler or something like yeah. that. So, I mean, you or just a regular dog. Mm -hmm. Like, shit. Um, when I was younger, we had a neighbor that had a German Shepherd. And it was a nice dog. We used to see it all the time. One day... It ran, like, my little brother, when he was maybe three, he was just sitting in the yard minding his own business, and that um, and that German Shepherd ran across at it and tried to attack him. Yeah. Just no reason. Yeah, you would think, well, man, if that lion got out, it would eat people. No, not really. That, the, the, those lions and lions that are hand-raised by people, just kind of like dogs. A dog could go out and escape and kill a person. But the li lion's not that much different. Um, but no, they're... Real friendly, just walk up to people. Hey, how you doing? Lay down, real chill. That'd be super cool. That yeah. Like. They've been doing. It's been happening for thousands of years. Romans had them. Walking around in the Roman palace. Well, like I said, if you raise it from mm -hmm. a baby, it yeah, don't see humans as food, and it wouldn't see you as like a yeah. snack. They've never hunted anything. They've always been fed. Yeah, so they don't have to. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't trust it completely still, because. You know, it might still have instinctual things where it's like, man, I'm kind of hungry, Dad. I think most, eat her. most educated experts now that have spent time with all these animals say they're exactly like domestic house cats. It's the same thing. The only difference is the size differential. Yeah. yeah well, I've always known that domestic cats yeah. like pet, are pretty much just like, because I always thought like if Pookie was lion size, she would probably eat my face. No, big they time. won't. They won't. <laughs> no. She probably wouldn't, because you're probably, feeding it. Because I'm mommy. Yeah, but, you you're, know you're mommy I mean? and you're feeding it. They have neoteny, child. They because they're like a domesticated animal, because they've been raised around people. They see people as, as somebody who gives them food and yeah. takes care of them. They don't eat people. I and, guess. And people pet them. Yeah. You know? So, it's a different situation. They're not wild. That's why a lion will sit right there and have fun with a house cat and a dog and a chicken, and a monkey. And won't won't eat any of them, because it, it's always been fed. It's like, got hey, it all, all on just, video. We're all just hanging out. You can see video of it. I love videos of like cross species friendships. Yeah, that's so cute to me. Yeah, one of my favorite ones was like this friendship that I saw between a cat and I think it was a raven, or an owl. Hmm. Maybe it was two different ones that I'm thinking of. But yeah, they were like best buds. Yeah, they used Big to hang cats out are pretty in the yard. Chill if they're raised around people, their personality is pretty chilled out. Oscar says, why is it that whenever you hear of a dog attack on a human, it's a pit bull? It's never a Rottweiler, German Shepherd, St. Bernard's, People except, except Cujo. Yeah. Dogs are even larger than pit bulls. Yeah, it really, and I kind of feel like pit bulls got like a really bad reputation for a while to a point now where like a lot of apartment complexes and stuff like that won't even allow you to have that breed. But 
I don't know. I think that that dog, I think some of it was media fear mongering. Um, and I think some of it was the fact that that dog was a little bit like maybe bred for fighting. I don't know. I'm kind of more scared of Rottweilers than I am of pit bulls because Rottweilers are like really big. And the thing about it was that I used to know my ex-husband's cousin, somebody, so somebody in his family, they had a massive Rottweiler, like as a pet. And I went over there to the house and the fucking dog was huge and it was like fucking terrifying and it was like really aggressive, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people had them for that reason because they were like really big aggressive dogs and they thought that was cool or whatever. So I don't know. I'm kind of more scared of those because pit bulls aren't very big. I've never known anybody that had a pit bull actually, but, but like I said, when I was younger, a German shepherd did attack my brother, like my little brother when he was little, didn't hurt him, but cause we kind of intervened, but, and it was the neighbor's dog and they'd had that dog like forever. I don't really know why. Pitbull, pit bulls attack because people were beaten up, beaten up. Beaten that's, I kind of feel up. like the thing about Trying it, to make them into fighting dogs. If a, I think that's the problem. Yeah. The thing about it is that domestic dogs, I don't think they will generally attack people unless they've been abused. Yeah. Um, and that's the only experience of life that they have. Yeah. Or unless a person is like really fucking with them. Problem is dog fighting. They got people that are weird, weird people that are into dog fighting. It's usually ghetto as shit. We need to stop all dog fighting. Yeah, big time. Yeah. They use bait dogs and shit. Just, you know, dogs are not meant for that. That's fucking stupid. They think it's real macho and shit to bet on these dogs. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, that is, there is absolutely nothing macho or cool about that no. at all. Nope. I don't really understand where that perception <clears throat> would come from. This that's is just, world shit. That's just fucked up. Half Naked You says pit bulls are way scarier than a German Shepherd. Pits were bred to fight. Dog yeah. genetics matter. Yeah, I think they do to an extent. But like I said, it's just like a person. Genetics is important, but how that dog is treated uh, yeah. matters too. You because... ever seen the little rascals? Remember the dog fucking Petey? Remember, yeah. Remember the dog Petey? That was a pit bull. That's right, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, that was a pit bull. Pit bull's been around for a long time. Yeah. I Well, because I kind of feel like when people got into the habit yeah. of fighting them... Yeah. Later on, that because I kind of feel like the whole pit bull is killer dog thing. That when did that come about? The nineties. Yeah, I, I kind of so. feel like that was maybe like a nineties. I think they always kind of fought them. Because when I was little, when I was when I was a kid, I remember everybody being scared of Dobermans. I remember that being the big scary killer dog, Dobermans. Humans are, have a lot of bad habits. It used to be back in Europe, they would do bear baiting, which is the tie tie bear. Tie a bear's fucking leg to a chain and put it in a shackle and then fucking stake it to the ground and run up and fucking pester the shit out of that bear and fucking People try to set it on up. fire and fucking do to a fucking because it's a bear. Yeah. A bear left on his own is fucking tame, pretty tame. Then he's like, hey, I'm friendly. not bothering you, Jesus yeah. Christ. Most of them are friendly, but you know, and they weren't doing that to savage bears. They were just medieval Europeans were fucking crazy. They were psychos. It's all that lead, man. Yeah. I mean, they did shit that only psychos would do. Yeah, big time. Well, like I said, you did that now. You do that nowadays, rightfully so. People would be like, yeah, you're insane and you're going to jail. Some people would kill you. And again, probably rightfully yeah, so. Yeah, the right person sees that, they'll kill you. Because, I mean, doing shit to animals, that's yeah. akin to like doing stuff to people. Yeah. That's how serial or killers start kid, out. It's, it's akin to doing it to children. They Yeah. They do cruel shit to animals. Like I said, I was coming home from work one night, and this is when I lived in Daytona. Somebody on, like, on a couple blocks from my house, somebody had put a plastic bag over a cat's head. Yeah. And, and I found it. it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I had to, like, rip a hole in the bag so the cat could breathe. I couldn't get it off because it was, like, freaking out and stuff. Yeah. But I ripped a hole in it so it could breathe. Yeah. But it's just kind of, I was like, who the fuck would do this? Some a serial evil, killer. That's evil who. kid or something. A fucking serial, a potential serial killer. Yeah. That's who does that kind of shit. Yeah. Why would you even think of that? I'd do that to whoever did that. Yeah. So said, but that's a human being. I don't mean if you do me. Uh, I don't no. give a fuck. 
I'm sorry, but I don't give a fuck. You do that to an animal or another human. I think you've you've revoked your human being card. Yeah, yeah. You've re- you've yeah. revoked your human being card at that point. I'm next infantry man, 101st fucking airborne. Division. I don't play. I don't, I don't, six, three, I don't two, like seven, that. Fucking di- I was in the first three two seven recon. Looked that up. It's also known as Tiger Force. Fucking the most war crimes out of any unit. I'll kill you like it's nothing if I'm mad at you. Confirmed. Yeah. And I mean shit like that. Confirmed. If you piss me off like that and you're a bad person and shit, I'll fucking down you. Yeah. Because they're asking me to kill people in our, not just me, the other guys that work with me, kill people that were nothing wrong with them. They are just wearing the wrong uniform. Horrible. I will never Stupid. understand. I will never understand. Sending these guys people, out. I, well, I will never understand people that, like serial killers and stuff like that, that have this compulsion to hurt something littler than them or like weaker yeah. than them i will never understand inadequacy yeah that's got to be what it is that never occurs to me it's just like a horrible horrible yeah. and i see people do that like i said that fucker that they did that don't fuck with cats documentary that killed those kittens and the like sucked all the air out of the vacuum bag or whatever and oh it's that just, dude and I it's like i knew the guy killed his boyfriend later yeah. yeah well and the thing about it and hooray for the internet People saw that and they got so fucking mad they found his ass. Yeah, I would have fucked that kid up. They man. found his ass. That dude was a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Then he ate parts of his boyfriend and shit. Made like who the fuck would do that? Shit. It's like that's fucking. They crazy. start off killing the animals like that. That's what Hel- I mean. Helpless animals. They're just helpless. It's a fucking kitten. Yeah, Come on. Got, yeah. <clears throat> you know what? This is fucked up. But we go to. Um, like, on the weekend, sometimes we go to the Books A Million and go to, like, hang out in the coffee shop or whatever. And a few times a week, they usually have adoption um, things for... It's uh, Hoffmeyer Animal Rescue, right? That's where we got Bambi from. Yeah. And so they'll set up all the little enclosures, and they have, like, all these little kittens. They do dogs, too, but they, they usually do them different days. So we were there this past Sunday, I think it was, and they had a kitten adoption event. So they had, like, all the enclosures there with kittens and stuff. And all these people are coming in, and, like, usually we see one or two kittens get adopted, like, every time we're there. So that's really, really cool. But it's always in the back of my mind, because I read and write about so much true crime, and I know how horrible these fuckers are. I'm always, like, really worried that somebody in that crowd is just going to come up and do something to one of those kittens. Yeah. Like, before they can stop him. Yeah. It's like in the back it's of my mind. It's there, though. It is, but I just, I can't help those thinking dudes it. Those do that to those animals are doing it in private, because there's usually some kind of weird sexual kind of element to it. There was a video running around. I don't know if they ever caught the guy. It's probably Eastern Europe. It was called, I think, a One Bitch, 12 Puppies, something like that. Yeah, I remember it, that. It was pretty famous, yeah. Yeah, where he does terrible things to this, these puppies in front of the mama dog. And then he kills the mama dog. And fucking, he videotaped the whole thing. And I don't know if they ever caught the guy. They thought there was, it was something, East, they thought it was something that happened in one of the Eastern European countries. I hope somebody skinned him alive. They had another dude that was got, another kid that was putting cats inside of bird cages and spilling gasoline over them and was setting them on fire, videotaping that as the cats fucking. Ah! And f- <laughs> See, I can't watch that kind of stuff. Like, even imagining it just, Man, like, keeps me awake. Man, I'd douse that kid's it. head. I'd douse that kid's head and fucking gas Yeah, be like, how do you like it, motherfucker? set his head on fire and see if he... How does that? You, see how long That's it pretty cool, right? It <laughs> pretty cool, right? Yeah, not so cool now, is it? Yeah, this is, I don't sure, give a shit cool. that you're 14. I'm setting your head on fire. I mean, I'm gonna say... I'm gonna videotape that. <laughs> look teenagers are stupid okay everybody knows that but if you're 14 and you're doing you're shit like that, that you're crazy yeah, yeah i think you probably need to be taken out the jail yeah. before you get even worse yeah give it a can of sterno because there's not paint his whole head with that fucking damn sterno cream and set that on fire because there's just no <laughs> Have him tied up to a stake i don't really know if there's any coming back from anything that extreme at that age <clears throat> no some of them do that and then they don't go on to but but it's, it's probably, not worth the risk. Probably yeah, better man. to err on the side of caution, I would kid. say. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't care if you're a kid or not. Come yeah. on now. Um, but yeah, so what were we talking about? Okay. Where were we? Uh, so we were talking about pit bulls. Somebody got bit by a pit bull, and this pit bulls are sweet. What happens with the pit bulls is that you're going to have these fucking fake badasses 
that buy pit bulls and try to toughen them up, and then they're fucking, then, then yeah. the thing's dangerous. Yeah. But you could do that to about any dog. Well, yeah, that's but what I mean. It's not just that breed specific. Only thing special about a pit bull is that it's got very powerful bite force, and once it's got a hold of you, it really can't let go. It's short. It's got a real fucking wide front end on it. You know, the shoulders pretty thick, but yeah, it, it can bite. But that's not the only dog that's like that. I mean, I wouldn't fuck with a damn regular old American bulldog. Those, that's real close, you know. And then there's other dogs out there that I think that probably, probably even worse. But if it if it wanted to kill you, but they're rare and they're expensive, so pretty much only rich people have them. And that shit like the Cane Corso. That thing's fucking huge. Just the size of a fucking small bear. No, it's the size of a mid-sized bear huge head on it I haven't seen any numbers on the bite force on a cane corso but I would imagine a cane corso could easily kill a man just by looking at its skull and the size and uh, man that thing's the size of a large man it's an amazing dog Somebody says, what's up with the sex creeps from Eastern Europe? I don't know. Well, those they're, they're, those guys are everywhere. But Eastern Europe over the you know past 30 years, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was kind of like a wild no man's land for a while. A lot of, a lot, it wasn't possible, a lot of poverty. There's no way to really have fucking law enforcement and People would grow up in weird ways since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Every now and then, it was creating monsters every now and then. It's just the environment. Danny says, the veterinarians that euthanize animals on a daily, on the daily, are the true emotionless psychos. I don't see, you know what, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian. And then it occurred to me that that would be a large part of my job. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah, no. There is no way I'd be able to do that. No way. I heard that in a lot of those centers, they just put all the cages in a room and damn run a car fucking tailpipe into it and just run the car and gas them all out. I don't know about I that, know but true. I mean, probably it's not. It's supposed to be but... a cheaper way of doing it than to give them all lethal injection. But still, there's just no yeah. way I could do that. I mean, I know <sighs> Carbon monoxide that, yeah, too. it has to be done sometimes and everything like that, but it's like, I'm not going to be the person to do it. Sorry. I like animals So what's too much. the next man eater? Uh, well, we haven't even finished talking about the last one. Oh, yet. Okay. Uh, Half naked. You said it takes a special kind of low life that uses a dog to feel tough, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna be tough, just be tough. Don't. You get in gym, work out, take some steroids. Well, and I mean, don't be Go so get fucking. Get a bunch of fights. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you need to do that, but don't be so fucking oh, no. try hard about it. Oh no. Getting don't be so fights... fucking try hard about it. Getting in fights will make you tough. Don't know, because you can get your ass beat. The fucking. <laughs> <laughs> in a way it's probably better to get your ass beat <laughs> you know what i mean rather than going around being like i could beat everyone's ass get your ass beat feel feel well, what a lot that of feels dudes like fucking want to go around and beat everybody they want to beat they want to fight weak guys that's what i'm saying they don't want to fight i, I kind of feel like the generally guy. the more people talk about how tough they are the less tough they are the less tough they are because yeah. i'm like if you were really like a tough guy you wouldn't have to like fucking tell everybody yeah. everybody would just know without yeah. you having to say anything <laughs> So that's why I'm always, like, really suspicious of any kind of marker like that, any kind of, like, virtue signaling like that. Like, I have this big, huge truck, or I have this big, tough dog, or something like that. I'm like, you have inadequacy issues, uh, clearly. So I, I, you know, I'm just saying. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's just the dog and the truck. It's just when you see the dog and you see the truck and then you look at the dude and there's a big difference, then you go, oh, I see what's going on. If you can have a big-ass truck like that, a big-ass dog, when I look at you, I better be impressed. <laughs> I would, they do have some dudes that are like that. I would okay, actually yeah. be more impressed by a dude that was like six <laughs> five and was like super jacked and everything like that, and he was just driving this little bitty like electric car because he's like, "Fuck it, I don't give a shit what people think about me." Yeah, they don't do that though. I know, but I'm just saying I'd be a lot more impressed Fuck by that because he's not trying to impress anybody. See, yeah. the fact that you're trying to impress somebody makes well, me much less. The impressed. electric car, you might be you're trying, you may be trying to impress some of those uh, green chicks though. Well, I don't, it doesn't have to be an electric car. Just anything that's seen as like... Just a regular car. Right. That's just yeah. like a little bitty regular yeah. car. Like a little bitty one. Yeah. So it's, so it's anything just, like that. Just a fucking Honda Civic. Right. 
Like that is a lot more impressive because you're not trying to impress anybody. Like I Which said, is I, the Civic is a great car. I, it is actually, yeah. but um, it's very reliable. <laughs> very reliable. We're doing like a commercial for yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, I, do, I like I said, I'm super suspicious of anybody that tries to impress people. Like yeah. I said, either be the way you are, and everybody would be like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Because if you're if you're overdoing it, then I'm gonna get suspicious. I'm gonna get suspicious. That's all I'm saying. Um, Oscar said uh, the kind of dog that attacked the little girl and when evil lurks. Yeah, what kind of dog was that? Which one was where evil? The the one that we just watched the other day, the Argentinian one. Remember the dog and it chewed that girl's face off. Oh yeah, I don't remember. What kind of dog was that? I think it was a bulldog, wasn't it? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was a bulldog. It might have been, but I have to go back and watch. Yeah. Because I wasn't, I, I remember looking at the dog, but I can't remember, like, what breed it was. Danny Rowling said the Honda Civic SI99 is the best Civic ever. <laughs> I never had a Honda Civic. I had, oh, wait, no, I did for a little while. I had a Honda Accord for yeah. a while. And I had a Toyota Tercel. And I had a Nissan Sentra. Yeah. I've had a lot of Japanese. You had a Honda Fit. You had, you I had, had a Honda Fit. Honda Fit. That the fucker was good. Man. I liked that car. The Honda Fit was fucking fast. I bought that one new. That was the first new car yeah. I ever. Well, the only new car I've ever bought. I would think overall the best car I ever owned was a uh, late '80s. I think it was a 1986 or I think it was an '86 or an '87 Toyota Corolla SR5 hatchback. Yeah, <laughs> that fucker ran. And ran and uh, and I was, I was kind of a kid. I couldn't afford to fucking do upkeep on the thing. All I did is change the oil and put brake pads on it and tires. That thing fucking ran forever. Corolla SR5, fucking bad car. It was just a fucking mom pa looking car, family yeah. car looking thing. Sometimes it's better not to get like some flashy like shit yeah. because thing I have a, fucking rock solid. <laughs> I have uh, right now. I have a 2004. Ford Taurus. Yeah. It looks like it looks ass. Looks like shit. It runs. <laughs> it looks so bad. It's <laughs> silver. Rust. It's got like, well, it's Florida, so all the paint has mostly burned off and it's got like spots of rust on it and uh, shit like that. But I'll be damned if that thing doesn't just keep on going. Hey, 700 for it. No, it wasn't. It was. Yeah, there was 700. We put it, it was 700. No, no, no. I we paid 1400 for it. Is that included all the tires? No. Okay, fourteen hundred, and then we paid another five hundred okay. to put tires, tires, and we had to put a new. Um, I think we had coil to put pack. a new coil pack in it. Yeah, I put that in, and a couple other things. Yeah. yeah. So it ended up being like nineteen hundred. Yeah, and that car was infested with roaches. It was. Oh yeah, that's right. I had to bug bomb it like yeah. several times. And, yeah. Because they had capped. It was a company car, and they had not used it for a while, and they so they the they truck. left garbage in the trunk that they forgot about. Garbage bags. So it, so it was, yeah, like garbage bags. They put them in there. They were going to dump them somewhere at some point, and I guess they forgot about it. So the, the car was infested with German cockroaches. So there was that. But I've had it for years and years and years, and I've hardly ever had a single problem with it. It's like, like I said, it looks like ass, and it's just kind of like, it's one of the ugliest cars you'll ever see, but it still runs, so I'm not complaining. It's got some little problems, but... Nothing that's not... Now that I say that, it's probably going to break down like tomorrow, but you know what I mean. Um, all right, so where was I? So we were talking about Jim Corbett. Yeah. So he ended up... Okay, so all of the man-eating animals that he killed, they um, estimate that of all the man-eating animals that he killed, those animals may have killed as many as 1,200 people. So... He has a high, because, you know, like, he not only killed the Panar leopard, he also killed the, you know, man-eater that I'm going to talk about next, which is the Champawa tiger. He also killed other man-eaters, too, like the Ta um, the Tala Des man-eater, Mohan man-eater, Thak man-eater, uh, Muktasar man-eater, and the Chowgar tiger. So th those were either tigers or leopards. But so he killed, like, a lot of big cats that killed a bunch of people. So he's kind of, like I said, kind of a badass. And he was sort of the one, I don't know if he was the first person to put this theory forward, but he did find that a lot of the man-eaters that he killed had some kind of injury. Like they'd either been shot or their teeth were fucked up or something like that. So that's, he kind of came up with this theory that it's like, oh, well, they're injured and they can't hunt their regular prey anymore. And that's why they're going after 
people, maybe. But like I don't, I don't know if he was the first person to come up with that, but that was just something that he noticed. Um, another funny little fact that I discovered when I was looking at Jim Corbett was that he didn't take anybody with him. He liked to go hunting by himself, uh, and he always went on foot. But the only um, other creature he took with him was his little dog, Robin. Him and Robin would go out hunting. <laughs> <laughs> that he would just go out and like kill fucking leopards and shit like that just all on his own which is like i said super badass so here's another big cat this was another one that jim corbett killed this was the champawat tiger um now this is a rare case of a female animal being a man eater um just as in human beings most of the man eaters are male animals but uh this one was a female now this tiger is thought to have killed more people than any other, um, well, tigers in general are known to have, thought to have killed more people than any other big cat. Um, and possibly responsible for more human deaths than any other wild mammal. Um, and mammal is the distinction because there are other, like, crocodiles and stuff like that that have killed more people. But as far as mammals go, tigers, top of the, top of the chain there. Interestingly, tigers usually also attacked, attack during the day. Uh, leopards and lions usually attack at night. Like I said, when people are sleeping. But tigers, they do not give a fuck. They will just come in in the daytime and fuck your shit up. I think the, overall the number one killer, though, when it comes to mammals, I think it, or animals, I, it was either the hippo or the damn water buffalo. From what I remember. Um, it's either hippo or crocodile. Okay. Um, I thought that water buffalo also. Maybe. African water buffalo, I thought, maybe. was even more deadly. There's more of them, though. You know what I mean? There's more of those. Right, buffalo, yeah. So it might be a statistical thing. Yeah. It's like there's a shit ton of fucking black bears. More people are killed by black bears than any other bear. Not black bears. Yeah, black bear. Oh, really? Black bear kills the most people. But there's more of but them. But there's so many of them. That's a small percentage of the black bears doing it, and they're around human habitation. Yeah. Kodiak and fucking polar bear and fucking grizz would kill a lot more, but they're not around human. Oh, and habitat. polar bears absolutely will hunt humans yeah. for food. But yeah. the thing about it is that there's not enough humans around for them to like make Three, a statistical. Right. Right. Somebody in there was talking about how bad the grizzlies were. The grizzlies, nothing compared to a polar bear. Just that they're not around people. But a polar bear will fucking eat you. They see they're they're always hungry and they're in a place where they got to eat everything they see because there's not much there. Yeah, because there's not much around. There's not much there, and they, evidently so, yeah. a polar bear will track you for weeks. Yeah, they're, they get your scent. That's it. Sure. They'll track you for fucking weeks because they're like, ooh, food. They're hungry because they'll, they'll walk a long way to get something to eat. Which you know you can understand that they're living on a fucking desolate, frozen ice cap, man. Yeah, I mean don't go sashaying across the fucking Arctic mm -hmm. or anything like that, thinking you're all cool and shit. Because you get to eat your ass eat by a polar bear. I think bear. polar bear's biggest out, big, biggest bear of them all, I think. I think it's bigger than a Kodiak. Uh, I believe they are. I would have yeah. to look that up. But yeah, polar bears generally are very, very large. <coughs> yeah. Very large. Um, let, <coughs> Wait, hold on. Let me see. Uh, DVD Dragon says, Grizzly bears are the worst. They will eat you ass first and not even buy you a drink. That's, that's the guy I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> polar bear is worse. Polar bear is worse. They're just well, like not, I said, it's not around them. It all, yeah, yeah, it all depends statistically on how, you know, how many people are they around. Yeah. Because obviously, like a lot of bears, polar bear would, if there were people all over the place, yeah, they'd probably snack on them all the time. Yeah, but the top bear, top bear is the black bear. But that's because there's so many of them. And they live in places they live where there's where lots of people. Live, right. Like I said, we used to see black bears all the time. Right. They were sitting in our fucking driveway. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're 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 they, they're mostly docile. But because they're around people, when you have the odd black bear who decides it's going to eat people, it's it does. <laughs> I th but I think overall in numbers, they're the number one bear, human killer bears, black bear. But like I said, the chances of you seeing a black bear that will kill you is near zero. I mean, normally if yeah. you leave normally them they alone, just run. like I said, particularly in Sanford. I don't yeah. think I've seen any around here. Not well, maybe. But in Sanford, we used to see them all the time. Yeah, and no one's just been walking eating. around in the neighborhood. Yeah, and no one's been eating. 
We saw one in the middle of the day walk just strolling into someone's garage. Came back from the club. It was open. Came back from the club and had one sitting in our parking lot, in our driveway. In our driveway, yeah. Yeah, he was sitting there. Just on his sitting head. there by the garage. Yeah, his back up against the garage. It's like three he in the morning. He goes, oh shit, and he rolls over and just <laughs> walks off nice and calm. And he was bigger than a big man. Yeah, he was. He was, he was very big. Large. That's very funny. He's probably four hundred pounds. Three I saw kids. a family of them running across the street in the middle of the day too. Well, it was like I think it was like five or six o'clock. <coughs> yeah. When I was coming home from work. Yeah. And I was, saw a bunch of them just walking through some of these He was yard. big enough easily to kill and eat a man, but he didn't. He just walked away. No, nah, he eating the garbage cans. He was chill. Yeah. yeah, they don't really, they're not desperate for food. They're like, hey, there's garbage cans with yeah, yummy food in it. they're all full. They're licking all your pizza boxes and all yeah. that kind of shit. You know what I mean. So, uh, so yeah. So, late 19th, early 20th century, uh, there's this region called Champawat, which is Nepalese, uh, near the Himalayas. And they were uh, preyed upon by one of the worst man-eaters of all time, the Champawat tiger, or tigress, as they call her. Now, she would, like, ambush people that were coming through the jungle or everything like that, and uh, this was, like, a lot of people. She, I believe she killed, I want to say it's 436 people. 436 people. Um, now... Again, just like Jim Corbett was saying, this tiger had been shot by a hunter but had gotten away. So she was um, injured. I believe she had been shot in the face and two of her fangs were broken. So they surmised that because her teeth were fucked up and she couldn't hunt her regular prey, she decided she was going to start preying on people. Um, now they did send hunters out after her um, you know, once the body count got up in the 200s, but, um, they couldn't really find her. Apparently she was like pretty smart and knew how to hide and shit like that. Um, the Nepalese government eventually sent the national army after the tiger, uh, because it was getting a little out of hand, you know what I mean? Um, but they didn't get her either. Now, because of all the activity uh she did actually move her territory to india uh to the champawat region and then she continued eating people over there now they said that every single person that she ate she started getting more uh fearless and eventually would just start attacking people like she didn't really give a shit anymore she was just like attacking people in broad daylight and kind of run around villages and shit like that and just attacking people that were walking around yeah Oh, Sod's there. What's up, Sod? How you been, bro? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. So, at some point, she had eaten so many people that um, they're like, okay, well, we need to bring in a professional for this. And the professional they brought in was the aforementioned Jim Corbett. Um, so, he came in. His story was, because he wrote a couple of books about his exploits, and he talked about the, uh, hunting this tiger. And he... Um, followed a trail i guess the tiger had taken a teenage girl from a village and had left a trail of like blood and limbs um you know so jim's like well now's my chance and he follows the trail of blood and limbs like into the wherever the tiger was and went after her so he actually did end up shooting the tiger in 1911 now, because the uh, the townspeople there were, like, so happy that he had done it, they made him, like, a holy man, you know what I mean? Which I guess, you know, because she'd killed, like, hundreds of people at this point. Uh, yeah, 436 humans. Yeah, I was right about that. Um, and those were only the ones that they knew about. It's entirely possible that she might have killed a lot more people than that, and they just didn't know. Like, they didn't report it, or the people got eaten or dragged away or missing, and nobody reported it or whatever. So, at least 436. That's crazy. Uh, so I think that this tiger is still the worst single man-eater in history. Because remember I said that the Najambe lions killed between 1,500 and 2,000 people, but that was a bunch of lions. That was a whole pride of lions. This is one single tiger, one single tiger. that killed at least 436 people. Um, and one, uh, one article that I read said that she'd killed more people than even the worst human serial killers other than you know genocide obviously um 
And it says, this is funny, the only serial killer, alleged serial killer, um, that had a similar body count was Elizabeth Bathory, hmm. who was known as the Tigress of someplace that I can't pronounce. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So I thought that was kind of funny. All right, so we did a show about Elizabeth Bathory, and it's like, I'm not entirely sure how much of that shit is true and how much of that was exaggeration. You know? They have, they, supposedly the authorities have her diary, but don't let anybody see it. Yeah, so Somebody's I don't really... read parts I don't of it know. and they just said, you know... I'm not saying she wasn't a horrible person. I mean, she maybe she was. But I'm just saying I don't know if some of it was, uh, like, exaggerated. The further you go back in time, the more famous and notable those people are, the more you have to wonder how much of you, how much of their stories are legends. Yeah. I think, I mean, there was even people that thought that maybe even Julius Caesar was a, was a fucking mythical person. But historians have come back and says, well, we know the secession of the emperors and the names of the emperors. And, and you know what I mean? And we know the, the names of the praetors and in the orders they were. So who was Imperator? You know what I mean? In that period. It had to be somebody. So it must have been this guy, Julius Caesar, that they're talking about. Even though he wasn't, he wasn't Imperator. He was dictator. Which is different. His adopted son, Augustus, was the first emperor. But... I mean, there's a lot of a lot of historical characters. I don't. I'm not even sure they actually existed. There's a chance fucking Socrates and Plato were were never existed, because there's a lot of fake Socrates out there, books and shit. I mean, the thing about it is to, is that just because there's fake shit that was attributed to them later doesn't on mean, doesn't yeah. mean that they didn't necessarily exist. But it does kind of like make you question. Yeah, well, I remember. I remember uh, one author commented that. A lot of the people of antiquity and a lot of the famous figures in antiquity, we believe that they're historical because the ancients believed that they were historical. So a lot of times we're getting their stories handed down. It's not the first editions, you know, but we don't know. The ancients believed that they existed, but the ancients believed in all kinds of shit that didn't exist. The ancients believed in, in dog, dog-headed people sometimes. The weird shit. Like there was no Marco Polo. It's a fictional character. I'm really suspect about Joan, Joan of Arc. There's too much about that story that sounds like myth. Sounds like legend. But like I said, it could be that it was a real person, but then like a lot of mythical stuff got attributed to them until like later, later on. Right. So it could be that. It doesn't necessarily mean that person didn't exist ever. Right. But it was just that they had all these stories like attached to them later. Right. So there's that possibility also. Because people do like to embellish shit like later on especially if somebody's like super famous or super legendary or whatever so let's talk about i think somebody brought this up earlier and i thought that we had already done a show about this the beast of javaudin um i thought we talked about it when we talked about when we did our vampire and werewolf show but maybe not because i did a search for it on our channel and i couldn't find anything but i don't know i kind of feel like this might need its own show because it's, like, so tied in with werewolf legends. I'm going to say, though, that I think the Beast of Gévaudan, which was a real thing, like, it was a real series of attacks that happened. Um, I don't know. I think maybe the overriding theory is that it was a wolf or a pair of wolves that were unusually large. But after seeing a few things about it, and I probably, and I think you probably agree with me on this, I think it was probably a hyena. Yeah. The way they describe it, it sounds like a hyena to me. Yeah, they're mistaking a hyena for a wolf. They say it's a wolf. It's like a wolf, but it's not a wolf. Uh, what they said, I think they said it had stripes on it, did it? The way and well, they said it had like a mane type mane of thing. Like it. the way they described right. it, like it sounds like a hyena. And a tail with a ball on the end of it. It sounds like a hyena to me. Probably a hyena, even though a, t a hyena doesn't have a tail with a ball on the end of it. It's just no, but well, like I said, I don't think it was a fucking werewolf either. No. But I mean, it was it was a thing. It killed yeah. a bunch of people. They killed it, and people saw it and said, "Yeah, that's not a wolf." Yeah, they, even they showed said it's it kind of like a wolf, but not yeah. really. They showed it to the king of France. It was rotten. He says, "Get that thing out of here," <laughs> which is awesome. It was probably a hyena. I'm kind of leaning toward that theory. I kind of hmm. think a nobleman had bought a hyena because noblemen back then had private zoos. They collected animals. I think he bought a hyena, and the hyena got out. 
It started eating people. He didn't want to fess up to it. Yeah, he's he just like, be, he's like, I didn't do it. Not me. I don't even know yeah, what that is. What hyena. are you talking about? African hyena. Yeah. So the attacks happened, there were a lot of them, uh, between, uh, in Javadan, which is in France, between 1764 and 1767. Um, the thing about it is that even though a lot of people perceived it to be a wolf or a werewolf even, um, people of the time, there were wolves in the area back then, so they would have recognized it as a wolf if it was one. Um, the way it was described, they said it kind of looked like a wolf, but it was bigger and it was kind of reddish, like its fur was kind of reddish, and that it smelled really bad. Which, like I said, again, that sounds like a hyena to me. Yeah, probably like a big old female hyena. Yeah. So the first victim was a little girl, uh, which he killed in June of 1764. And apparently the animal, some reports say there were maybe two of them. They're not really sure because I think some of the uh, eyewitness reports said that there were actually two of the animals, which is entirely possible, sure. Um, the weird thing, they said that the, the animals seem to attack humans and not other prey animals. Like it didn't attack domestic animals or cows or anything like that. It would just go after humans specifically. Um, in total, as far as they know, 210 humans were attacked. Uh, of those 113 victims died, 98 of those were eaten, partially eaten. Um... Because the attacks during this with three year period were so frequent, uh, again, like people at the time would think they thought it was like some punishment from God or some shit like that. Like I said, um, I kind of feel like the Beast of Javadan gets brought up a lot when people talk about werewolf legends because a lot of people thought it was a werewolf. Um, and you know, it, from some of the descriptions, it does kind of sound like a wolf, but there were some European wolves around at that time and people would have recognized it. And some people said, yeah, it kind of looked like a wolf, but not, you know what I mean? And some of the drawings of it, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, I think it's a hyena, to be honest. Um, and I think it was probably escape from a zoo or something, or, you know, some nobleman had some private collection of exotic animals or something and it got out. And like Tom said, he didn't want to fess up to it. So he was just like, I don't, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Um, because there was a case fairly recently in uh, Malawi where a man-eating hyena attacked a bunch of people. Um, so they do do that. They're not really known for doing that. But, you know, animals can go rogue and do that kind of shit. Uh, so hyenas do have big-ass teeth. They do smell uh, pretty funky. And they are generally sometimes bigger than an average wolf would be and you know people in france at this time period wouldn't necessarily recognize a hyena because they weren't native to the area and they are a little bit weird looking you know what i mean they had that kind of spine th main thing like on their back and shit like that so it's like if you saw that running around and it was bigger than a wolf and it's just kind of like and it smelled funny and shit like that you're like what the fuck is that because they wouldn't have seen it you know what i mean yeah I kind of suspect that's probably what it was. Europeans didn't know what animals were. <laughs> they, they didn't know foreign animals. They knew an animal when it was an animal. They get they get real confused and in, in about what was related to what. If they saw that uh, uh, something like a like a hyena, they probably would only be able to equate that with with a wolf. And shit like this has gone on for a long time and it went way into the modern era. People don't realize in the early 1900s, the New York Zoo had pygmies in it. Pygmy humans in the zoo. Yeah. Yeah. Like Which they is were insane. Animals. Yeah. That's a person. Yeah. <laughs> you went to Obviously. the zoo to go see some African pygmy people in there. Yeah. We don't know what, and it was, evidently they were in there for a while before they said, look, you gotta let those go, man. Yeah, it's like, um, <laughs> those are human beings, can we not? Thanks. Yeah. Man, people are, Imagine dumb, that, huh? people are dumb as shit back then. <laughs> Look it up, people, if you don't believe me. No, it's true. Yeah. It's true. New York Zoo had pygmies in it. Yeah. And it wasn't really that long ago, mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest. Yeah. I think that is... was even... The, I think they had them in there to you know, almost uh, almost 1920s. It might... Well, I don't know if it was quite that recent, but... 1915, It, it wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah. shock me if it yeah. was that recent. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> but... And they weren't being mean-spirited. They just... They didn't know any better. They didn't know any better. <laughs> they weren't sure. They're like, they but the thing about it is that be a person. being mean-spirited yeah. and just being stupid as shit, yeah. 
if the end result is the same, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because the end result is the same. They didn't think about it. Like, You're well, putting a person in a cage. In a cage. And well, having people a, pay to come gawk at them. And like the people in the cage going, what the fuck is going on? Why are we in here? What is happening right now? Although they may have seen other people that weren't pygmies as... Because evidently, even, even on the continent of Africa... I'd be I think freaking even to, out. I th- even think to this day, where the pygmies live, I still think that the surrounding African people hunt and kill them and eat them. Last I heard, and that was during the which during is also the fucked era. up. They don't see them as people. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is pretty weird. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty weird. <clears throat> so yeah, Danny Rowling said you definitely did do a show about the Beast of Javadan. I thought we had. Yeah, we I thought, did. like I said, I thought we talked about it on the werewolf no, it was, show. It, we didn't do a whole show on it. We mentioned it in another. I show. think we mentioned it on the werewolf yeah. show, maybe. Um, but it was actually killed eventually. Uh, by a fella who was a hunter named Jean Chastel in 1767. Um, now, even though the legend says he used a silver bullet, and it's obviously that was probably like a later interpolation, I would imagine, um, but it was eventually killed. So people did see it, but they didn't know what it was. So I, I've, I lean toward the hyena theory. You know what I mean? Thank you very much, Bryce. That is very, very Bryce nice. Bryce is here. You. Thank you. What do you say? This might be controversial to say, but I don't feel the same outrage when an animal hurts someone instead of when a human does it. I kind of don't either, to be honest with well, you. Well, it's just the animal just doing its thing. Yeah, it doesn't know. Yeah. Like, to me, it's tragic, but I'm not ready to join a mob with torches and pitchforks. Yeah, it's definitely not the same. Like, when a bear eats a person, like Grizzly Man or whatever... Like, that sucks, and that's horrible, and I don't want to listen to the audio and that's stuff. That's fair game, though. But, yeah. on the other hand, that yeah. dude was hanging out with grizzly bears, which in you don't territory. have to do, yeah. in their territory. Yeah. I'm not saying he was asking for it. I'm just saying that it's... It was maybe an inevitable outcome. He was playing around... He didn't deserve that. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that the bear didn't know any better. Bear just saw him as a foreign creature that had yeah, to be so, um, Right. You know? Yeah. And he wasn't about to... Other other bears could, you know, have a friendship with the guy, but not that particular bear. People, they got people like that. Some people you can't fuck with. You know, other ones you can. He ran into the wrong bear. And he knew that that bear would eat him. He says, if I ever get eaten by a bear, So it's see, be that that's one. another kind of thing. He, then that he saw like... that bear again, and he goes, oh, shit, and it ate him. I mean, that's the thing. It's just like, I kind of feel... Like I said, he didn't deserve that happening to him, but... He knew the risk, though. He knew... Yeah. That that might happen, and he called it. He 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 knew what bear would eat him. I mean, you're hanging yeah. out with wild animals. Yeah. You better be okay with the outcome that you might get eaten uh, by, by watching, said wild animal. I remember watching his movie. He was okay with that. He said he was willing, well. He was willing to give his life for the oh, bears. Well, okay. And that's what happened. That's what happened. And his girlfriend, I think, was like that too, because she she knew the risk too. But he was telling her to run. She didn't run. If she had she run, she'd have lived. Yeah. Yeah. That bear wouldn't have chased her, I don't think. But like I said, I can't really blame her because, like I said, if you yeah. were getting eaten by a bear, I'm not going to fucking leave you there. You better. Then you'd be you'd be next on the list. I know, but I don't think you, I'd be able to. I just wouldn't be able to. You have to. I'm not that it's kind of person. survival. I know. I'm just not that kind of person. Yeah. And maybe she wasn't either. You know what I mean? So I get it. You're going to die. You're going to get that Darwin Award. You're going to run. <laughs> he was telling her, run. She wouldn't run. I know. I get it. Yeah. But, you he know. knew that there was no way. But see, yeah, but he, the he thing... couldn't be saved, right? So you, you take the the second best option is to use my death as a distraction, so you can get away. Yeah, so it's only, like I'll get away. So with. only one dies instead of two, and that he called it right. She called it wrong. She should have run. I know, but like I said, yeah. I understand why she didn't, though. I understand why he told her to run. Well, I understand that too. <laughs> yeah, but I understand why she didn't. She went down with it. But the thing about it is that, but I get what you're saying because, you know, an animal is just doing what it does. It's got to eat, yeah. Protect it, it doesn't have, like, a moral framework to be like, oh, this is a person, I shouldn't do this or anything like that. But a person absolutely knows better. Well, the thing is, is that you're putting morality in it. From the bear's point of view, that is the correct, correct moral. This thing doesn't belong here and I'm hungry. This is not a bear. Well, that's what I mean. It's yeah, like, so it doesn't have the same it's, moral it's, framework as a yeah, human has. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Right. But like I said, a human absolutely knows better. Um, so yeah. you go risk. and fuck with an animal, you yeah. go and do something to an animal that yeah. was just minding its own business, yeah. then 
to me, like, you fucking with, like, we were saying about that fucking douchebag before. What was his name? Luke something. Luca. I can't remember his last what name. What did he do? The, the one that put the kittens in the bag and then, like, later killed them. Oh, that dude? Yeah, I forgot. Like, that, that dude, um, even if he hadn't killed a person later on, like, just from doing the thing with the kittens, I'm like, yeah, we need to take that person out of the gene yeah. pool immediately. He's putting kittens in Ziploc bags and watching them suffocate in there. And he was being all pretty boy and shit about it, like that shit was sexy. I'll fucking kill you for doing shit like that. That's what I mean. You're like fucking I, dangerous. And I think most people would probably, yeah. they'd be like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. And then he was meeting up with people to feed kittens to fucking anacondas and boa constrictors. Man, they got rats for that. Yeah. You Which don't that's not cool it. either, but I mean, snakes got to eat too. You yeah, know? You, you can go buy rat food and it's, it's yeah. you can buy snake food and it's rats or mice. And they give them live. That's just how it is in nature. Yeah. Um, but there, there's no reason to give them cat kittens. Yeah. Kittens aren't mice or kittens aren't rats. Yeah. You know, it's not the same niche in nature. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like I said, I wouldn't. I like snakes, but I wouldn't have a snake just because that. Because I really don't like the thought of having to feed them. Because I like rats too. You know what I mean? But I know they got to eat. So. But Everything I don't. Has to live. I know, but I don't want to do it. Nature is about things trying to kill each other. Yeah. Including the plants. The plants are trying to kill each other by stealing nutrients and sunlight. Everything tries to kill everything else in its own arena. Except me. I'm not killing anybody. Well, you eat things. Except Every, maybe everything some you eat was Everything you eat was alive. Oh, I know. <laughs> I didn't kill it, though. You got the creatures living in you right now that your body's trying to kill. Or your yeah, that's true. There's only three relationships. Predation, <clears throat> parasitism, and symbiosis. That's it. Or I guess you said there's also no relationship. But well, there's yeah. only three things you can do. So that's four things. Yeah. What's that? That's four things. Yeah. Yeah. Or three or four. Yeah. If there's no relationship, then it's four. Yeah. Bryce said, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm outraged when a human hurts an animal, even if they don't hurt humans. Yeah. It's just, I'm it's just. It's a precursor to hurting humans. Yeah. Anybody that can do that to a person or do that to an animal would do that to a person. Yeah. I feel like. And, uh, I, Especially I, if it's a little helpless animal. I only approve of hurting people if it's goal directed, or if it serves a mission, or if it imbe- or if it betters your your people. And I understand it then; it's understandable, and it's between adults usually. But you're not gaining anything from needless death. You know, I mean that, that you don't. Animals in nature intend not to kill other animals for no reason at all some will kill an animal like Pookie will kill lizards to play with them but eventually she she might go or Be, Beijing does it and eventually she might go back to take a few bites out of it but she doesn't really want to eat it but I don't think she kills them on purpose I think she's mostly playing with them Pookie for sure does not kill lizards yeah. on purpose she's not yeah. mean spirited she's just like ooh a toy trying to play with it yeah. it moves yeah and like so when we could like you know, she's not trying to kill it. She's just trying to play with it. She's like, ha, 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 yeah. like, and we're just like, oh my god. Yeah, the just, the just, portal is like, help me. Yeah, and they just bite. <laughs> they bite automatically. It's just part of holding it. You know? Yeah, and, and I mean, yeah. I mean, they bite us. Yeah. Like not like with just when they're playing, like soft. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just kind of like, ah, 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 yeah, you know what so I mean? They, they just do that. But yeah, so they don't realize. So like I said, I never thought that Pookie was like trying to kill the lizards. She was just playing with them. The most vicious I thing. The most vicious you. animals. That I've seen that did did shit needlessly were great apes like chimpanzees. They'll kill other chimpanzees from other groups for no reason, and they do it in gangs. Because they're closer to humans. That's yeah. why. Yeah, they're kind of creative. About yeah, the closer it. To, the closer you get to humans, the more you get that kind of shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. Well, humans are very similar. If you see how chimps kill, they'll be in a pack and they'll go out and look for an outside male, an outsider male from another troop. And they'll surround him, and he's trying to get out, and one of them will grab his leg, or the other one will grab the arm, and they'll start stretching him out, and the other ones will go in there and bite his dick off, and then they'll kill him that way. And then they just kind of lose interest and walk off, like, wow, that was weird. And then they do it again. Little war parties. Little serial killers. Trying to man. drive out the other... I think they're just trying to drive away the other groups. Yeah, probably. Um, Probably time for another drink but yeah. uh after that we're gonna talk about getting out of the big cat arena gonna talk about the very famous 
New Jersey shark or sharks. It might have been two. This was the series of shark attacks that inspired Peter Benchley to write Jaws, which in turn inspired Steven Spielberg to make the movie Jaws in 1975. Um, I just, you know what? Jaws, just going to say that, this is one of the very few situations where the movie is much better than the book. I'm going to say it. I read Peter Benchley's Jaws. It's good, but... Man, there's a lot of unnecessary subplots in there. <laughs> and the characters are not as sympathetic as they are in the movie. I'm going to say that right now. So, um, so yeah, there's all kind of like weird shit in the book that really doesn't need to be in there. The movie is much, much better. But if you didn't know, uh, Peter Benchley's Jaws was actually based on a real series of events that happened way the fuck back in 1916 off the coast of New Jersey. Now, this was 1916, and this might be crazy to think about now, but back then, I don't think people really realized, um, it, this seems weird, but I don't, I don't think they realized that, like, sharks were dangerous, maybe? Or they didn't really think about it one way or the other, which, like I said, seems kind of strange. Um, now these sharks, I... Okay, so there's controversy over whether these attacks were all carried out by one shark or maybe it was two. They're not entirely sure. But like I said, it was uh, along the coast of New Jersey, 1916. So the first person that was attacked, he was this guy. He was kind of a young guy um, named Charles Van Sant. And he was swimming with his dog in fairly shallow water off the coast of New Jersey. And he was attacked by a shark. Now, his uh, members of his family and uh, friends of his and stuff like that were on the shore. And so they saw, like, some of the attack, which must have been horrible. I can't imagine. So they saw something was happening. And they kind of, a lifeguard ran out there to help him. Now, what apparently happened was the shark, like, fucked him up, right? And then, like, the lifeguard came out and was, like, dragging him to the shore and the shark followed the lifeguard for a little while. The lifeguard wasn't bitten. But they, but he actually managed to get him to the shore. Now, what had happened was that Charles's uh, femoral arteries were um, severed. And one of his legs, um, the shark had eaten, like, all the flesh off it. So it was basically just, like, muscle, Right. So he's on, so they called an ambulance, obviously, or whatever the 1916 equivalent was, um, but it didn't get there quick enough. He actually bled to death by the time help arrived, which, like I said, that's kind of why if you get your leg defleshed, uh, that's going to happen to you. Five days after that, that's yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not, that's the two-handed glass. Yeah. I can't even, I have to hold it like this because my little tiny hands, my baby hands. Five days after that attack, there was another guy whose name was Charles Bruder. And he was attacked by what they thought was the same shark in a similar area. And he was out uh, kind of swimming. He wasn't too far out, but, you know, he's out there swimming <coughs> like, like you do. Um, one witness on the shore who saw the attack <laughs> told authorities... <coughs> this, this is messed up. He told authorities at first that he thought a red boat had capsized, but actually it was just all the fucking blood in the water is what it was. Uh, the shark had actually bitten off both of the dude's legs. They did manage to get out there and drag him back to the shore. Um, and you know, he was all fucked up and apparently, uh, briefly. Yeah. A lot of blood loss. Yeah, you get both your legs bit off, you're not uh, living both, too long after yeah, that. Sorry. Both um, femoral, gonna... femoral arteries severed. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, the first guy the shark attacked, it bit his legs, but it stripped all the flesh off one of the legs. Ooh. He lived, though. No, he died. He died, too. He bled to death. Yeah. After they dragged him to the shore. Shit. Same kind of thing. Uh, man, I would never want to be eaten by a shark. Cause, man, that's what I mean. They oh, eat that'd you be alive. The, oh, that'd be the worst. Yeah. Razor shark fucking It's teeth. awful. It's awful. It's awful. Like being bitten by a mass of razor blades. I have nightmares 
about just being in this kind of black nothingness yeah. and then just seeing like a shark fate like an eye like yeah. right there. i have nightmares like that Ugh. or like seeing one coming out of the darkness like a big old pair of fucking metal snips filled with fucking razor blade teeth just go right through you in a single bite go right through you go and right think through about your it, bones here's the thing Ugh. they tell you nowadays like oh well most sharks they don't mean to attack a person. They just kind of see you there and it's like, oh, what if I could eat that? And then they bite you. But it's just kind of like, oh, well, they don't really want to eat you. They just want to check and see if you're food. But it's like at that point, you're already dead because they've already bit your fucking leg off. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm sorry. That doesn't make me feel any better. From the bottom looking up, you might. You look like a seal like a or seal some shit. Swimming. That's what they always They're say, especially sure. if you're on a surfboard because a lot of surfers do get yeah. attacked. But you know what I mean? They're not sure. And they evidently, evidently they're around their mouth is a bunch of sensory cells nerves and if anything touches them they instinct and reflexively just bite and pull in yeah they're just so like they're not let's see what decision. that is they're not making a decision to bite it's like a fucking fuse on the end of a fucking bomb if it touches anything it just bites which so, is you know like i they, said maybe only they spit it out if it's a human they go Ugh. usually because it's all bones and they're like oh, that's no good and then they'll fucking swim off and then you're fucking you're bobbing. not a fish part of you fucking you know, you're that's half what a I man mean. and you're bobbing up and down in a sea dying right that's what I mean they're only taking like a little experimental bite but yeah. that experimental bite has bitten you in half yeah. so you're not gonna survive that obviously yeah they don't expect to have a bite full of a bunch of bone they want it to be something like a bunch of blubber and flesh and shit like they bit the side of a whale or bit of fucking porpoise or a yeah, dolphin like, in half. There's a lot of meat there. It's like a chicken leg or yeah. something. Too many bones. I don't like yeah. it. But like I said, they've and... still killed you. So, but <laughs> Well, and the thing about it, like I said, I grew up in Daytona Beach and I used to go to the beach a lot as a kid. Uh, not necessarily my decision. I'm not a beach person, but my mom loved the beach so she used to take us all the time when I was little. And, um, you know, I would never go out too deep because sharks. Um, and Barracuda, also. I wasn't a big fan of those. Oh, and, um, also sting, or, like, jelly, jellyfish. Yeah. We always had, like, a lot of jellyfish that would sting you, and, like, we were there at the beach lots of times when people got stung. Yeah. And they're not biting you to see what you taste like. They don't have a sense of taste. They don't have a sense of smell. And they know what the bite is supposed to feel like. If it's got a lot of bones in it, they, that's not what they're looking for. But once, it, once there's blood in the water, they love that smell. They'll start going into a feet. Yeah, there's frenzy, like, we're just gonna eat all okay, of it. Okay, all right. They can, the closest thing they have to taste is that smell. They can smell blood, evidently, miles away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so. it doesn't have to be much blood either. No. If that's just, why I don't go in yeah. the water, like, when you're on your period, or if you have a yeah. cut that's bleeding, or They'll anything like that. smell that shit like, miles seriously. away. But I have had, I haven't had that many, inca- I've had, like, a small shark, like, kind of swim against my leg which i was just like nope i'm out of the ocean for the day bye and i was only in like knee deep water and i was just kind of like yeah no um and when i was in my marine biology class in high school they were showing us a photo that someone had taken from a helicopter of daytona beach which is where i'm from and here's like all the little people swimming in the water going we were like swimming at daytona beach and then out here it was just like sharks (laughs) Like, a whole bunch of them. You could see their silhouettes in the water. And I was just like, well, I'm never going in the ocean ever again. And even a small shark could take a bite out of you the size of an apple. And And they weren't, like, great whites or nothing. They're they're probably sand sharks is probably what they were. But they still, sand sharks have these fucked up kind of teeth that stick out like that. Like, all crooked. But... Um, yeah, I would, especially after I saw that picture, I'm just like, well, I wasn't like super jazzed about going in the ocean before that anyway. But after I saw that picture, I'm just like, yeah, no thanks. Because it's just like, what, like 10 feet. There's all these people swimming right there in this shallow water. And then it was just like, just sharks everywhere. Some of them might have been dolphins. I don't know. But still, that's, that's pretty messed up. Bryce says, uh, yeah, animals killing each other doesn't bother me either. My cat has killed so many birds. She's still a good girl to me. <laughs> yeah. Pookie kills lizards. And They're just doing what they do. That's, how that's they just do how they, they can't help it. Yeah. Look at her little face. Beijing killed a squirrel one time, tore its head off. Yeah. I think Beijing did that. And she what? killed some moles or something once. Uh, they, a mole and uh, gophers. Yeah, she kills those. Yeah. Like I said, Pookie doesn't go outside much anymore, so yeah. she doesn't really kill anything. But she does kill lizards if they get in the house. Pookie got chased by a dog. After that, she doesn't want anything to do with outside. 
which I'm kind of happy about because I don't really like her going outside, mm. especially around here because it's kind of all open, you know? Yeah. And I don't really like her going outside of, like in this open area. But yeah, so this guy got his legs bit off. They dragged him up to the shore, but obviously it was he was dead by the time they got him up there. It was too late to save him. Now, people had said that they saw some sharks in the area prior to these two attacks. Um, but because this was 1916 and they didn't really have a good handle on sharks in general, uh, evidently, um, they thought that it maybe wasn't the sharks that were doing it. They thought it was a killer whale, which, okay. But I mean, killer whales, they have been known to attack people, but I think that's a lot rarer than shark attacks and shark attacks are actually pretty rare. Now, there was another set of attacks that took place in the same area, but not in the ocean. It was actually a creek near this town called, um, I think you pronounce it Matawan. I think it's Matawan. Now, some people, several witnesses reported they saw a shark swimming in the creek, but nobody really paid attention to them um, until July 12th. There was an 11-year-old boy who was swimming in the creek. And he was attacked by the shark and dragged underwater. Now, a bunch of the other people saw it happen and they rushed down there. And a dude named Stanley Fisher jumped into the water to try to save the kid. And that dude got attacked by the shark and killed also. Now, the last victim was another kid. And this was um, only about half an hour later, like after the first attack in the creek. Um... Now, this kid actually survived. Uh, he was wounded, but he lived. Now, a couple days after the Matawan Creek attacks, they caught a female great white shark uh, near Matawan Creek. Now, the story goes that they cut her stomach open and that they found human remains in there. Now, so a lot of people think, oh, well, this was the shark that did all the attacks, obviously, because there were some human remains in there. But not everybody is sure that the same shark was responsible for both attacks. They think maybe the Great White did the stuff in the ocean and that maybe the attacks in the creek were a bull shark because... But see, the thing about it was that this was kind of the whole um, incident that spurred the whole, oh my God, great white sharks are the worst. Now, I'm not saying they're not because of all the, you know, shark attacks are relatively rare. But of all the shark attacks, yeah, great whites are in the top three, I think, of like, you know, sharks that attack humans. But I think this was the kind of thing that's like, oh my God, great white sharks are the worst. But actually, bull sharks... I think are responsible for more attacks on humans or, and are generally more aggressive. And the thing about bull sharks is that they can actually survive in fresh water, which is why a lot of people thought that maybe the, that it was a bull shark, like responsible for the one. There in are, the, there in are the also creek. a lot more of them and they're in areas right. where people are. Yeah. Great whites. Not so much. That's why just like with the black bear. Yeah. It's statistics. So, so yeah, so I kind of feel, and, and I think people, um, underplay the uh tiger shark as well yeah tiger shark will also attack but and a tiger shark will eat anything they don't care what it's made of they found bicycles and car parts and all yeah. kind of shit in if i remember stomach. correctly the tiger shark also can be found sometimes in freshwater lakes where you would well bull shark too yeah you, you, yeah bull shark also i think the tiger also i think they both you could be in a fucking lake if it's connected to in fresh water yeah and get eaten by these and, yeah, it's happened. It's happened. Because they'll get into fresh water. They can live quite a while in it. Well, as far as I know, like I said, I grew up in Daytona Beach. And I don't know if you know, but in Daytona Beach, we're, it's right on the Atlantic Ocean. But it's kind of on, there's like a strip of land, um, you know, where A1A is. It's only like a mile across or something. And then there's a river, the Halifax River. And that river, at some point, hooks up with the Atlantic Ocean. So every now and then... Um, you'd be driving down the street next to the Halifax and you would see dolphins or something like a shark fin or something like that, like in the river because it's attached. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they'll go up in there for some reason. I'm not sure if the biologists really know, know what's, what the deal is, but 
evidently some of these sharks get sick of salt water. Maybe I guess maybe the hunting isn't good, or they're having a hard time. He's nope. like, I'm just gonna go check out what's going on. Yeah, over they'll here. swim up a freshwater fucking river to try to get into a lake, and evidently they can be in there for months. They're not supposed to be in fresh water, but they're tough. They can survive it. And then they go back out to the sea. Weird. Can you imagine being in a lake thinking you're fucking all safe and shit and get a fucking bite taken out of you by a fucking bull shark? Or just be killed by a fucking 12-foot bull... 10-foot bull shark. Well, it ha- <laughs> it happened in this situation. It happened, yeah. In a creek. Yeah. So... You'd never suspect it. You'd ne- I'd never even be thinking about it. Well, like I said, I'm from Florida, so even when I'm at a lake, I'm just thinking I'm going to be eaten by something. Yeah. An alligator or a shark or... A catfish. Who fucking knows? I don't even yeah. know what's down there, and I don't want to know. But yeah. So this shark, uh, they did catch the great white, and it did have human parts in it, so they know that that was responsible for at least some of the attacks. But like I said, they don't know if there was another shark, like perhaps a bull shark that was attacked, uh, responsible for the attacks in the creek. And they, as far as I know, they never did catch that one. This was a very, very famous um, series of shark attacks. And it almost appeared as though the shark was targeting people specifically, which I think was the reason that it was such a big story. Um, And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it did eventually end up inspiring Peter Benchley to write Jaws later on, uh, which, you know, in turn inspired the very famous movie. Um, The movie was also very responsible for making people kill great white sharks with wild abandon. (laughs) Which, you know, probably not great for the ecosystem. Because as scary as shark attacks are, and I'm scared of sharks, too, but you can't just... I mean, shark attacks are statistically very, very, very rare. I think the reason that... The reason that they're so fascinating is because when they happen, they're, like, super horrific. And you can imagine what it would be like. Like I said, it's horrible to think... Like, anybody to think about being eaten by a shark. That's a horrible fate. So, obviously, that's going to stick in people's minds, like, when it happens. But, statistically, it's very, very, very rare that that, that, that would happen. That's not going to make me go in the ocean, though. <laughs> um, I'm still not going in there. Fuck that. Because I don't even want to take, I don't even want to take the minuscule chance that I could get eaten never by one of those. in the ocean, huh? Yeah, I swam in the ocean lots of times. Yeah. But every single time... I kept thinking, it's like, what the fuck am I doing in here, man? This is like not, this is, this is shark house. This is not my house. Man, you when know I was, what I mean? When I was in Sinai. I used to swim in the ocean all the time. Yeah. But. When I was in, when I was working in Sinai in the army, we used to go down to the Gulf of Aqaba. Right, out, right outside Sharm El Sheikh. So it's a resort. And we'd snorkel off, the, right off the reef. It was wild, man. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Octopus. I had it down. Sergeant Major Fish and all little fish following you around. Mm-hmm. I had some kind of I think a fish called a sheep head. Oh yeah, yeah. Looks yeah. like a sheep's head. Yeah, they're weird looking. That thing followed me around all fucking day. There, I, you know what? I've seen like, what videos of those fish. They must be like super curious or yeah. something because I've seen other Watching videos me. of like divers yeah. with those fish like following them around. Like, hey, what you doing? Yeah, just trying to see what it's trying to see if I'm gonna stir up food. That's I probably what they're. I doing. didn't though. I said, I guess he was disappointed. <laughs> it looks like, like a head of a damn sheep. Yeah, they're weird looking. Weird looking thing, yeah. They're weird looking. Floating around. But yeah, I can't... That's the thing. Like I said, I grew up right on the coast. So I used to go to the beach all the time when I was a kid. I didn't go out super deep, like I said, because it's the ocean. And yeah. sharks live there, and I'm just like, no thanks. That's They can live there. I'll, I'll be over here on the land. Thank you very much. But I did used to swim around in there. And I did have sharks swim past my leg... Um, we did have jellyfish, uh, you would see barracuda sometimes, yeah. you would see, um, stingrays sometimes, small ones, shit like that, because like I said, I didn't go out super deep, so but, uh, yeah, they have sharks there in Egypt, a shark killed a guy in 2022, yeah, there, saw, yeah. My friend Saad said that, yeah. Most of the time when I was there, I was worried about this damn snail, it was poisonous, it lived inside a shell. And it, would, and it would bury itself in the in the sand, and if you stepped on it, it would shoot a poison. Oh yeah, needle in you. That's kind of like a what is that fish it's called? Tremendously a, painful. Like a stonefish. There's a stonefish. There's a fish yeah. that looks like a rock. Yeah. 
And it's super poisonous too. Yeah. Like if you step on it, like it has yeah, poisonous this is, this spines. Is, this isn't a fish though. It, no, I know, but I'm just saying there's that similar. It's a snail and it's inside of a shell, a round shell, like the size of a hand grenade. I forgot what it was called. Uh, we, luckily we didn't see any. I was w more worried about that. It's like stepping on a landmine or something. Well, yeah. They said it was just tremendously painful and it can kill you. People died from it. I forgot what the fucking thing was called. Maybe somebody in the comments knows. Bryce said, my people believe that if a shark eats someone, that's fair because it's her ocean. Yeah. I get that. But like I said, I'm staying my ass out of the ocean. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about, let's go into the reptile kingdom. We're going to talk about some snakes and alligators and crocodiles. So I wanted to talk about a few snakes that are not specific, like specific man eaters, but you know, in the sense that there wasn't like an individual one, but this just kind of fascinated me because people being eaten alive by giant snakes is just, that's another kind of nightmare of mine. Um, so there aren't really obviously that many snake species that can swallow a person, like an adult human being. Usually it's the shoulders uh, that fuck up the, the whole issue there. But uh, there have been some stories, some of them have been confirmed, about big ass giant snakes swallowing adults. Now, one of these happened in 2017, and this was in Indonesia. They found an adult person inside of a 23 foot long python. So it had eaten a whole entire person yeah. and they found the whole fucking body in there which that blows my fucking mind and that's another thing that would be fucked up because a snake well they us usually eat you head first which i'm not saying that would be good either because it would probably take a long time for you to die right but still well they don't eat you alive oh. they're constrictors well that's true they wrap around you and suffocate you so you're already dead when they you're already dead when they eat you yeah and then there was another case in 2018 where there was like an older woman, she was in her 50s, and she got eaten by a reticulated python. It was like in her garden, and it like popped out and ate her. Yeah. They just wrap around you, and when you exhale, they tighten down. And you in, and you inhale, they fight against it. And every time you exhale, they just fucking keep tightening down. Yeah. Eventually, you can't take a breath. I mean, yeah. That's, Constriction. Yep. And the thing about constrictors is that even if they're relatively small, like we're talking 10 to 15 feet, which is still pretty fucking big for a snake, but I'm just saying it's small for a python, um, they'll do they'll constrict you and kill you even if they can't physically swallow you. Because there are some um, reports of snakes that like killed a person, like a, like a normal size adult person, and then couldn't eat them like they would just eat their head but then they like had to kind of spit them out or whatever because they weren't they couldn't fit in there dvd dragon comes up with with cone snail with a question mark oh yeah maybe i don't think it was i don't think that's what it was called it wasn't quite a snail it was a type of mollusk and uh it was in like a cock shell kind of looking thing it was smooth i think it might have been called a tiger snail i think Maybe. Something like We're that. We're going to have to look that up because that's yeah. actually kind of interesting. Like I said, it just reminded me of like a stonefish. Which poisonous. Is kind of, which, like I said, is a fish, but it looks like a rock. Like it camouflages itself on the on the seafloor. Yeah. For some and reason then I if you step it on it, it has poison spines. Yeah. It's not this. I know, but I'm just saying that's, yeah. what, I, that's what it made me think of. But yeah, so um, let me get into... I have a couple of... Like I have an alligator and a crocodile, and then All that's right. the last stuff. Okay. So you should find this interesting because this is a probably true and maybe somewhat legendary tale from Florida and Alabama. And this is the legend of Two-Toed Tom. That was the name of this particular... Yeah. yeah. So this dude was a big-ass alligator. And he supposedly was kind of roaming through the swamps of florida and alabama during the 1920s now the reason he was called two-toed tom was because one of his like his little left hand he only had two toes on it uh the story went that he had been caught in an iron trap at some point 
So the reason that they knew this was the same gator was because of his footprints, because they were very distinctive looking because he only had two toes on his left hand. Um, uh, according to witness reports, he was about 15 feet long. And a lot of the people uh, who lived around in the area thought that he was, again, a demon, like not a normal gator, because he apparently ate a lot of people. He started out, though, eating livestock. He would eat mules and cows and other stuff. His favorite human prey, though, was women who would come to the water's edge to wash their clothes, like to do their laundry, and then he would just... Perfect target. Pull them, yeah. He would just pull them in the water and eat them. Um, stories about Two-Toed Tom go back uh, to 1922, I believe. The first written account was from 1934, which was from a book called Stars Fell on Alabama. And um, in this book, they actually just called him Two-Toe or Red-Eye. Uh, they said he was 14 feet long and that he ate livestock and both men and women. Um, also, this book said that he would rape the women before eating them. Yeah, uh, of course he would. Which, of course, yeah. okay, someone's, where, got, a, where, where someone's got a weird fetish. Where is this? 1930s. No, um, where is it? Well, it started out in Alabama, Alabama, but then it moved to Florida, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this particular alligator, uh, so it eats a bunch of people, and then there were a bunch of attempts to kill it, obviously. Um, there was one guy who had been in the military, and he was a sharpshooter, and he, like, sat for in a hunting blind, like, for a week, like, wanting to kill it, but he never did it. And there was another very famous incident where there was a farmer whose name was Pap Haynes, which is the most Alabama-sounding farmer name ever conceived. Um, he decides he's going to blow the swamp up where the alligator is, which that sounds legit. So he gets all these syrup buckets, like 15 of them, and he fills them all with dynamite. <laughs> and he puts them all in the swamp and just blows the <coughs> fucking swamp yeah. to smithereens. Did he kill the alligator? No. He killed like, pretty much everything else in the swamp, though, like all the other fish and everything. So good job. Bryce over New Zealand's wondering if... Uh... Europeans ever actually read his question now I wonder if any tribes or ethnic groups have worshipped alligators or crocodiles like my people worship sharks that would be interesting to look up yes there is Europeans in the medieval period let me pee real quick. didn't differentiate between crocodiles and dragons and dragons were a big part of you know European lore uh Based on based on based on fucking other shit that I had read, if you were to show something like a crocodile or an alligator to to a European of that era, they just would have said that that was a dragon. Because I don't think that they they don't they don't they don't ever reference crocodiles, and they didn't have alligators. I don't, I don't think Europe has any alligators in it at all. I think that's I think that's a an American thing. Now, I wouldn't really call it worship, though. It was just kind of a... Dragons were always kind of, uh, in medieval lore, equated to the devil. Um, so they were satanic. They are always like the bad guys. Knights are always, you know, trying to go out and kill a dragon. <laughs> I don't know where they came up with the idea, but you've seen dr drawings... European drawings of them—they're two-legged with wings, like a serpent. In some, uh, in some of the old kind of archaic English type languages, a dragon is also called a worm or wyvern. I don't know why the worms are called worms. Again, they're calling those dragons, I guess. Jenny would probably know. By the way. Why is a worm called a worm? That means dragon. Yeah. Why Why are they calling those w things dragon? W-Y-R-N. Yeah. In Dungeons and Dragons, they also called them wyverns. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Which worm. Because they're probably spelled that I'd have to look up too. the etymology of that because... Why are they calling worms worms? Right. That's, that's like calling a worm a dragon. You know, like an earthworm. Right. I don't understand why they did that in English, but... So... Wouldn't be any worship of dragons and lizards, but 
they revere them, revere and fear them. They were like Satan, you know. Yeah. Satan was also called a dragon in the in the Book of Revelations. The Chinese worshipped them though. In a way, they honored dragons as something that was good. It's not quite the same creature though, really, when you think about it though. In Both Chinese fluid. mythology, they're yeah, the dragons are very similar worldwide, which is yeah. really interesting. But um, Chinese dragons tend to be good. Yeah. Um, whereas dragons in European folklore are evil. Yeah. Tend to be not always, but tend to be evil or monsters. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. And I don't know where they came up with this idea. This, maybe they dug up a dinosaur skull. On it, we'll see. That's what dinosaurs. I always thought. But there's like a whole. You need to get get into that. Maybe we should yeah. do a show about that because there's yeah. a whole. People have written whole papers on where the dragon mythology came from. Just because the dragon mythology is so similar across cultures, which you don't really see, like with a lot of so yeah, yeah, they're like the same things, and it's like there's cultural variations, but there's not a lot of cultural variations in dragon mythology, and a lot of like folklorists and stuff think that's really interesting. So there's yeah. like a lot of um, papers and stuff about that. If you were to show a medieval knight that alligator crossing that Florida, Florida fucking um, golf course, that famous video of that fucker walking, he would have said that that was a dragon. Uh, it looked a, like a dragon. That is a fucking dragon. That was a horrifying video. Yeah. It was so, it's so big. Egyptians had crocodiles, so it could be Stories of crocodiles made it as far as, as Western Europe. They could have been, yeah. They might have been talking about Egyptian crocodiles. Yeah, because Danny brings up uh, Egyptians <coughs> worshipping a crocodile deity. Yeah, yeah. Sobek. Yeah, Sobek, yeah. Sobek. Sobek. Well, well, that's what I mean. That's yeah. Nile crocodiles. Um, Sobek was a devil-type creature, I think, wasn't he? Which or, makes sense because right. even today, Nile crocodiles are yeah. one of the most dangerous animals in the world. Like as, as far as like killing humans goes. Yeah. So maybe the Chinese heard about them word of mouth also during some ancient trade routes. <coughs> yeah, it could have been that. <coughs> They've dug up ancient Chinese or ancient uh, Roman ruins and found Chinese coins in it. Trip. Yeah. So there that's... was some vague connection with with China and Western Europe. Right. I think there was indirectly. a lot more contact than yeah. maybe we've been led to believe. So stories travel. Yeah. You know. So maybe it's not as weird as it seems that their stories about dragons are so similar. But there is like a whole that's like a whole subgenre of folklore like the dragon thing. Mm -hmm. So I just I don't know maybe we should do a whole show about that because that'd probably be really interesting. Dragons are an interesting story. Yeah, I would whole, I wouldn't mind getting into that. The whole actually. world has dragons and the whole world has pyramids. Yeah, that too. Yeah, but the, but I don't, well pyramids are different like depending on like different enough that I don't know. According to the Old Testament, Egypt had corn also. Remember. Mm -hmm. Joseph's dream, he saw seven years of corn devoured by seven cows. And then the cows didn't get any better. I didn't, I don't know where this corn thing came. I didn't know that Egypt had corn. I thought they just had wheat. Yeah, I thought corn was a New World thing. Yeah. So where where'd that come from? Why is, it, why, why is it translated into English from the Old Testament? Corn. Well, now... It see, must mean wheat. Yeah, it could be a mistranslation. Yeah. It could be that too, right? So, Ben says dragons built the pyramids. Yeah. We'll see. Now, there's a theory I haven't seen. There you go. We're gonna write a book about that and make a million dollars. As Graham Hancock, he'll probably tell you all about. <laughs> he probably already wrote a book dragons about dragons and fucking yeah, dragons and pyramids. Everybody's got them. I'm gonna write that down. Actually, okay, yeah. I'm gonna write down dragons because yeah, I feel like I wanted to do a show about that before, but I never remembered. Yeah, there's a lot there. That's what I mean. There's a whole... And yeah. I love anything having to do with, like, comparative mythology. I love that kind yeah. of shit. It's just fascinating to me. So, um... So, yeah. So, this farm... Where was I? Okay, so we were talking about this alligator. Two-toed Tom. So, this farmer puts 15 buckets of dynamite in the swamp. I'm gonna blow this fucking alligator up. 
That's typical, like, Alabama kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. And Florida thinking, too. Well, they dynamite fish all the time. Back sure. In, back in that era. It's illegal. Well, now. that's... They made it illegal because that is a, a, it's a very successful way of fucking killing fish. Is dynamiting them. Which is maybe not what you want <laughs> you to do. You dynamite them bitches and they come up dead ones. I got all the fish the you pick them up. out of the swamp. Yeah. Now there's nothing <laughs> left. Everything's dead. Yeah. Good job. Good job. But yeah, so... Um, so he, yeah, he kills all the fish in the swamp, so the story goes. But um, the alligator was smart enough to get the fuck out of there, I guess. Where he wasn't around at the time. So he didn't kill the alligator. Now, again, the story goes that not long after he blew the swamp up, the farmer and his son, who were also there with him, who was also there with him, they hear this horrible scream and they hear all these splashing sounds, like from a pond, like nearby. So they go over there to see what the commotion is, and they see the alligator's eyes, like above the water line for a second. And then later, they found uh, the half-eaten body of the farmer's daughter. So I guess the alligator being like, fuck you, buddy. I'm going to eat your kid while you're blowing my shit up. That's how that happened. So I don't know if that was a true story, if that was just like an urban legend later on. But um, stories do seem to indicate that this alligator was a real alligator. And some people think that it might be still alive. Because this was just, um, you know, alligators live a long time. And he has been seen as recently as 2009 and some people and he's been what what his thing is is he'll like be around for a while and then like he'll disappear for a few years and everybody's like oh well he must be dead and then he'll show back up again you know what i mean so he has been seen like fairly recently so the story goes that after the whole swamp exploding incident that he moved from alabama and decided he was going to go to florida So the story went that he started living in a lake called Sand Hammock Lake, uh, which is in between Esto, Florida, and Noma, Florida. No, I don't have any idea where those two places are. They're probably in the Panhandle, I imagine. Um, Now, it would kind of like... It still ate livestock, and um, people still tried to kill it. Like, I guess there was some boys that tried to shoot it with a rifle and stuff like that but didn't really uh, do anything. There was an article in 1972 about him, and there were some sightings back then, um, but, you know, it it was only been seen, like, periodically since then. Uh, they did find some tracks in 1972 on Boynton Island uh, in Florida so that they think belonged to that alligator. Now, starting in 1987, they've actually had a festival celebrating Gus, uh this isn't gustav this is tuto tom gustav is the one we're gonna talk about next and he's the grand finale he's the grand finale yeah because yeah. there's because somebody asked me about him and i'm like yeah, yeah we're gonna talk about him he's the grand finale yeah because he might be still alive he might yeah. be still alive um but yeah so tuto tom they have a festival starting in 87 uh, about tuto tom in this in esto florida um, but they don't know if they're going to keep doing the festival, I guess, because interest has waned since 2019. But they have done it every year since then. Um, another fun fact about Tuto Tom is that he was mentioned in a novel by Harper Lee, Ghost Set a Watchman. Uh, Harper Lee, obviously very famous for writing To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, and she wrote about him in another one of her books. So this is a like very well-known legend but like i said he does seem to have been a real alligator that did actually like kills people so let's talk about the like i said the grand finale gustav yeah where where was gustav from uh gustav is uh, a nile crocodile before we go to to egypt i want to say something about the southern crocodiles i remember as a boy the Cajun wing of my family in in Louisiana. Old friends of the family when I was like 11, 12. And I'm talking about old men that we knew who were in their 70s or 80s when I was 10, 12 years old. They believed the alligator gar to be more dangerous than the alligator. They said it was bigger, faster, and more deadly. 
I don't know of anybody ever being killed by a gar, but they swore by I it. never heard that either, yeah. but maybe. It, they said that it could swim faster than a, an alligator, and you got and it, it had sh- the teeth were sharper, and that it was uh, more deadly. But that goes against what we know about the gar. Although, like I said, there are old photographs where they were trying to exterminate all the gar out of out of Louisiana, out of the out of the bayous out in there. And they would have electrified paddle boats out there in the early 1900s, shocking them to death. And they would have photographs of some of them strung up, and those things were fucking 11 feet long, according to the photos. And evidently, those weren't the big ones. They were just those were just common ones. And they're not that big today. There's no telling how big those things got back in the day, back before people fished them and killed them all out, when there was you know less humans around. And like I said, some of those things could have been over 100 years old, maybe 150. In my time fishing with my dad in the 80s, 70s and 80s, very early 90s. I never saw an alligator gar bigger than five feet. And my dad said, no, they get a lot bigger than that. You know. But it just goes along with everything else. I think things used to live long enough to get a lot bigger than they do now. There's too many people. They catch them and kill them before they get that big. Yeah. Interesting. Who knows? Maybe a really big alligator gar were, were worse than an alligator. But there's no modern statistics. Ben says alligator cars. Alligator cars. Alligator gar. Alligator gar. G A R gar. It's a fish. It's, it's not even really a fish. They're kind of eels. Kind of like an eel. Yeah. But their alligator head kind of their head kind of looks like an alligator. Yeah, That's big long snout that. filled with these sharp teeth. Yeah. Used to catch them, but they were never really big. They're ugly ass fish. Ugly. Yeah. It, the, the fish is half head. Yeah. Can't eat them. Doesn't yeah. matter how big it is. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't. You can eat, eat them. them. It's but probably they, about like eating a eel. They don't really taste but, you know, good though. Americans don't eat eel. Nah. The Japanese would probably love it. They probably make sushi out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gars. It's a gar. Gar. G. Yeah. There's other kind of gars. But alligator gar is what we have in the south. Is what we have in this house, and they call them that because their head kind of looks like an alligator. They yeah, when they get full grown, like they're the size of an alligator. Yeah, like I said, the biggest one I've ever seen probably, like I said, four or five feet. Yeah. But yeah, apparently, they used to get a lot bigger. Yeah. And apparently, there are a lot bigger ones, but I've never seen one. I used to see them in the spring that I swam in all the time. Legend, legend had it has it that they used to be twelve to fifteen feet. That's how big that they got. But they're talking about 1800s in that period. In that period, they got that big. Weird. I'd like to know. Maybe they are. Maybe they do get dangerous when they're that big. I would imagine any fish that was that size would fuck you up. Yeah, because you're small enough to eat. Sure. Thing is, they tend to skew. They don't. They can't choose. They have to swallow things whole. So I don't think they can swallow a man whole. I don't know. Depends on how big they actually get. That's what I mean. I have seen some catfish that look like they could swallow a person mm-hmm. that were big enough, but I don't know. The gar are there today. Yeah. yeah, their mouth is kind of small, so I don't really know. Because, yeah. you know, people have big heads and big shoulders. Yeah. That's why snakes have so much trouble, like, swallowing us. It could have always been that in the eyes of a Cajun, they were dangerous because they looked more dangerous. Yeah, Didn't necessarily maybe. mean that they're... Right. I don't know that they... I don't know... If, I never witnessed any kind of data that anybody got eaten by one. Not in the modern era. They claimed that they used to get eaten by them, though. It's just a mystery. But Cajun kind of just tells stories. Yeah, you never know if they're and like just. They always think were big and they were ugly, so they might. Oh yeah, yeah, but you, your your grandpa Paul got eaten by one of those. Or he did, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Swallowed him whole. Shit, we gotta kill them all. And they're out there killing them. It's like really probably yeah, your grandpa Paul yeah. just like yeah, died of like liver failure. Your grandpa Paul Boudreau, he got he he got eaten by one of those. <laughs> Boudreau, yeah, Boudreau got eaten one of those. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Boudreau Thibodeau. Yeah. That yeah. was actually your grandpa Paul's name, wasn't it? No. no. My, granddad, <laughs> my granddad's name was was Bolivar. That's right. Yeah. I remember you told me that. <laughs> Bolivar Francis Ross. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so can we talk about Ghost Staff? Yeah, Let's talk go about go. Ghost Staff. So, like I said, uh, this crocodile, um, 
probably this is most of his attacks took place around um burundi and uh probably the largest nile crocodile alive yeah. uh he's about 20 feet long weighs about a ton and he may be the largest individual predator on the entire african continent now there's a french naturalist whose name is patrice Fay, and he's been studying gustav for a while he even did like a documentary on him in 2004 for pbs i believe which is where a lot of the information about him comes from they think that this single crocodile has killed at least 300 people damn they did talk about him on uh the william shatner show yeah they talked about gustav because he's pretty famous um and like i said they're not actually sure if he's still alive or not he was given the name gustav by patrice Fay. How, how big was he about 20 feet that's that's an old alligator yeah he's a crocodile crocodile he's an owl crocodile yeah probably 100 years old at least yeah that well um as far as i know the estimate was that he's about 70 about 70 yeah okay at least that's what i heard between 65 and 70 they think he might they didn't be. catch the beginning of the program they don't know how long an alligator lives no they don't they think he might have hatched in the 50s yeah um because that's i imagine that's later on when like um you know reports about him started coming out so they think that at this stage if he's still alive which they don't know if he is um that he might be between 65 and 70 years old alligators grow their entire lives as long as they have enough food as they grow they need more and more food per day and the and as they age they don't seem to to be get decrepit at all they're just as lively at 100 as they are when they're young so they seemingly could live a long time we know turtles can live more than 150 years so there's a possibility that if an alligator has enough food regular f food that it may live 150 years and growing the whole time but that's not efficient it's not efficient in in the natural world in in in, in um in nature that means the older you get the bigger you get the more food you need to kill each day or on average each day so your food requirements get increase as you age that's the limit you get so big you starve to death eventually you just can't make your caloric intake but millions of years ago when there were dinosaurs everywhere you probably could because those animals were bigger so nobody knows the ones in captivity have lived over 100 years and i think the oldest one died because the dude that took care of it died and it it hadn't eaten in a long time it starved to death that's that's the story i heard i don't know if it's true or not yeah it sounds plausible but yeah they made um actually a movie about this crocodile uh called primeval that which came out in 2007 which I don't remember if I've seen or not. I've heard it's not very good. But it's yeah. uh, apparently about him. Because like I said, he's kind of world famous. Now, people that live in the area where Gustav has been seen. Um, they claim that this crocodile just kills people, again, for shits and giggles. Not just, not just because he wants to eat them. You know what I mean? Because um, sometimes he'll kill multiple people in one go. And then, like, not eat them. You know what I mean? Um, and he's kind of... They never know where he's going to show up next. Like, he's kind of unpredictable. You know what I mean? He kind of has a wide range, I guess. Uh, there's also a story. I'm not sure if this is true or not. But that he actually killed and ate an adult male hippopotamus. Which is crazy. I would have loved to fucking see that fucking fight crocodile versus hip i don't believe we'll it. see somebody said earlier like what who would win a fight between well somebody's saying right here that gustav won that fight that he ate a whole hippopotamus i don't believe it i don't know he's yeah. i mean it could be <laughs> maybe the hippopotamus was having a bad day man i don't know you'd have to drown he'd have to drown the hippo that's what and i mean then, and then you'd have to let the hip, hippo rot I mean, because they can't chew in the way that a normal animal does. They just yank 
rotten hunks off and swallow them whole. They, they don't really yeah. chew. Just they just of swallow. Of yeah. So, hippo, an adult hippo is pretty fucking massive. They are big, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Mean, I don't. I, I doubt that if even a huge al, even a huge crocodile would attempt it, because you could get hurt. Because the other thing about these fucking predatory animals, they <laughs> they can't afford to get hurt, because there can't be any downtime. They like to go shit. They like to go for easy prey. It just sounds like a boast to me. I'd, I'd have to. It see might that. be. I'm not real sure. Yeah, I'd have to see that to believe it. Apparently, though, Gustav does have a bunch of scars on him from where he's been shot and hit with spears and stabbed and shit because he's a big fucker and he kills people. Yeah. So people have been trying to kill him, right? But apparently uh, no one has succeeded and he just has all these scars like all over his head and all over his body and stuff like yeah. that. Like from various weapons. It sounds a lot like a modern dragon. That, like, yeah. That's like a dragon story. Yeah. Well, and like I said... I'm going to say, um, I went to, when I went to the alligator farm when I was a kid, and they had the really big crocodile, Gomak, who, I saw him alive. Like, he's dead now, and they have him stuffed, but I saw him while he was still alive when I was younger, and that dude was 18 feet. That's huge. Yeah. And he was terrifying. It wasn't so much the length, it was the girth. How fat he was, huh? Yeah, he was, like, super big around the middle, and I was yeah. just kind of like, holy crap. Like, if he opened his mouth, you could probably just lay in it. You're right. So, this Gustav is supposed to be, like, a couple feet bigger than that. You're right. And I'm not really sure, like, how much bigger around he is. I think that's what scared me the most, was how big around that fucking crocodile was. Yeah. Um, And this is Gomek I'm talking about, who was a little bit smaller than Gustav. Yeah. I saw a thing about this about these guys they can easily starve to death and they can starve to death while you're feeding them if they ever get into a caloric de deficit they can't hardly ever fucking claw their way back out of it that's weird when you think about it you know what I mean so big alligators like that have to be fed on time if they don't if they're not fed on time yeah they're they start going in a caloric deficit and then they what they eat, they're kind of making up, they're trying to make up for lost time. You know what I mean? And they can't eat enough to make up. That's weird. Yeah. Well, it, 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 caterpillars the same way. Yeah. Just like that. Once there's a deficit, they can't ever make up the deficit. I think that's how they die when they get that big. I've never heard of one dying of disease. You know, they could do it by accident, injuries and shit. But yeah. Yeah, when you deal with animals like that, starvation is a different game. I don't know, fucking crazy. Weird, yeah. Go to the restroom. But yeah, so this crocodile, like I said, because he's so famous and because he's killed so many people, um, the um, the naturalist, Patrice Fay, he's actually been trying to capture Gustav. He actually doesn't want to kill Gustav uh, if he finds him. He actually wants to... Um, you know, put him in an enclosure so he can't kill any more people, obviously, and maybe use him, like, in conservation efforts. So there's that. In 2004, they did a PBS documentary called Capturing the Killer Croc. And on that one, he was trying to um, basically, like, build a huge trap, <laughs> like, to capture the crocodile. Now, apparently, um, they had spent, like, a couple of years, like, preparing for this and, you know, trying to figure out what's the best way to catch this crocodile and, like, you know, scoping out the area and everything like that. So, they spent two months building this trap and, like, installing it and, you know, trying to catch this uh, crocodile but they couldn't really stay there for much longer because there was like some kind of uh, uprising in Burundi and they had to leave because there was, you know, kind of war and political unrest and shit like that. So they couldn't stay there. But they did have a trap cage installed in um, an area where Gustav had been seen in the past. Uh, they had like a 30 foot trap. Now, they f did find Gustav. Um, and they tried to like kind of lure him into the trap and they like put cameras in there and shit like that. However, it seems that the crocodile was uh, too smart for them. 
Uh, they did put some big snares on the uh, lake shore, like the shore and stuff like that. They did catch some smaller crocodiles in those traps, but they did not catch Gustav. Um, now, not too long before they had to leave the country, they had the, uh, they were kind of desperate and they're like, oh my God, we have to catch this fucking crocodile for this documentary. So they put a live goat in this 30 foot cage, which the goat was probably like, what the fuck did I ever do to you? Come on. Um, so the goat's just standing in there hanging out, like nothing really happened for a couple of nights. But then, uh, there was a bad storm. The camera got knocked out, like the infrared camera that they have. And the morning after that, the cage was found halfway underwater and the goat was missing. So they don't know if the storm sort of dislodged the cage to such an extent that the goat just escaped or if a crocodile ate the goat or what happened because the camera got knocked out. So they didn't see, you know, they had a camera on it, but it yeah. wasn't working obviously. So they didn't really know what was going on. So that was kind of the last time. Well, it was seen after that, but that was kind of, you know, kind of the last big effort to like catch Gustav and they never were able to, uh, as I mentioned in 2009, uh, he was spotted near uh, Lake Tanganyika, um, so he has been seen then. Now, in 2019, interestingly, there was an article about Burundi in a travel in Travel Africa magazine, and in that article, it said that Gustav had been killed, but it didn't give any specifics about it. Like it didn't have any photographs, or it didn't say who had killed him, or what had happened, or anything like that. So nobody's really sure if that was just, like, bullshit that, like, somebody was saying that. Because they didn't really have any, like, evidence that he had. But like I said, if he's only, if he really was hatched in the 50s, then he'd only be 65, 70 years old. And that's not old for a crocodile. So he could absolutely still be out there someplace. And like I said, a lot of the people that lived in the area said, yeah, he would disappear for, like, years at a time. And then he would pop back up again. Like, he would go someplace else. How old would he be if he was still alive? About 68-ish, yeah. something well like that. The, That's what I mean. Life. That's not crazy. They yeah. live, like, way longer than that. Yeah. So he could absolutely still be alive someplace. Now, he, he haven't been... big s- early, huh? He haven't been seen in a few years, but... Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not really sure... He must have been... He must have gotten a lot of food. Yeah, he... There weren't really any reports of him, like, man-eating until late... Until he was, like, real big. You know what I mean? So it must have been, like, more recent that they were those reports were because like i said he ate they think he ate like 300 people that they know of yeah that they know of it's weird it kind of reminds me of uh one in, in louisiana where a guy was flying his little cessna around and took a picture of, of an alligator down down in a, it was in an irrigation channel and by looking at the terrain features that thing was like clo- close to 30 something feet long Remember that? Yeah. We were seeing that 30 something foot long. That one was, they think that one was an alligator though. Yeah. But no one's ever seen it with their naked eye. The guy just had a photograph of it. And it didn't look like it was hoaxed. I mean, that's they not. They over that thing and they go, yeah, that's where it was. But and they were looking at the size of, you know, the, the train features and everything that was in the photograph. They're thinking about 35 feet long. That's fucking huge, man. Huge. For an alligator, yeah. Yeah, huge. But no one's seen it. I think I would have a heart attack on the spot if I saw a fucking alligator that was 35 feet long. (laughs) Yeah, giant. Oh, my God. Other people call bullshit on it. That it was some kind of Because like I said, photography. I saw the one in St. Augustine. Yeah. I saw Gomek when he was still alive. Yeah. And he was like 18, 19 feet. Yeah. And even that was just kind of like, holy fucking shit. He's like yeah. enormous. He was enormous. And it's just, even that scared me. So it's like if I saw one that was almost twice that size, yeah. fuck that. Oh my God. I remember in that program, people, some people were saying that that's not possible. There's not enough food out there for, for it to get that big. I don't know. I guess it depends on where it is. I don't think it's impossible. It would be unusual for sure, but... I'll try to look back into it again. Yeah. I'll try to find that particular one. I mean, that's big, but it's not... He had a photograph of it. Crazy. Oh, no, wait. Well, no, he didn't have a photograph. He didn't have a photograph. I think he, I think he just saw it. And then he knew where oh, it was, and then he drew... He was making the estimates at the time, I think. He flew oh, okay. over it. 
Well, that's a different he story. See, yeah, I don't think he had the photograph. Because I'm not good at estimating. Like, he drew it out, I think. Okay. And I just remember seeing photographs. Of, they took photographs of the area later. They showed it. And then they flew over like a drone. And he was saying how big it was, which would have been about 30-something feet. Yeah, James said 35 feet is unbelievable. Yeah. There's something wrong or deceiving. You don't hide a 35-foot yeah. alligator. And it was kind of in a drain, an artificial drainage river. I mean, maybe if it was in the Everglades, but... That was in Louisiana. Where, yeah, where like a lot of people don't go. Yeah. Maybe. But in a, in a populated area? Well, on the edge. I guess. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't think it's impossible. I've seen some fucking big ones, but even the big ones are 20 feet. That's crocodiles. Yeah. And alligators tend to be a little bit smaller. Like, the biggest alligator I ever heard of was 17 feet? Something yeah. like that. I don't know. How how was that big was that one that was walking across the golf course, did they estimate? No, it was like 13 feet, something like that. 12 or 13 It feet looked feet. a lot bigger than that. It was huge. Well, know. like I said, it's not so much the length, it's like how big around they are. That's kind of what's... Yeah, and his belly was off the ground and it was walking. Yeah. Like I said, had a medieval knight seen that, he'd have said that that was a dragon. And like, Dude, I saw a dragon. It was fucking huge. <laughs> you can't blame him for thinking yeah. that either. Because that's exactly what they look like. Gigantic lizard. Yikes. When we were talking about Gar before, Ben said, Garfish, I know, they're in the monster manual. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are real. We call them alligator gar. Well, like I said, there are several different species yeah. of gar. They just call that one species alligator gar because what yeah. their head looks like. It looks like an alligator But there's other fish that are yeah. just regular gar. You know what I mean? All right, so I think that's the last All story. Right. So are you ready to wrap it up? How yeah. long have we been on? Three hours and 35 minutes. You guys got a long show tonight. We did, yeah. Well, it was fun, though, talking yeah. about man-eating animals. Yeah. We always like to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, DVD Dragon said, Gustav is on trend. Uh, is on a trend D-ball stack. Oh, yeah. Always making gains. Yeah. And test. <laughs> he's got to have his test base. and then He's just fucking... eating people left and right. Yeah. He's got his test base. That's what happens. And he's got his fucking D-ball, and he's got trend running. On Anavar pills, too, right along with it. He does everything. Yeah. He's on to Gustav's secret. Yeah. <laughs> He's in there just like doing clothing. Gustav's in the gym. Yeah. Can you look like a little crack a little crocodile like lifting yeah. weights and stuff? A little big crocodile. Yeah. James says side tangent on size guessing. A group of scientists guessed the length of an anaconda, everyone guessed fifty to seventy feet was at was only thirty five feet. Okay. Yeah. Still a thirty five foot anaconda, um I would not fuck with a thirty five foot anaconda. So that's quite big enough for me. Yeah, they get big. Thanks. Like, that's big enough to eat me, and I don't really want to be eaten yeah. by a snake, particularly, either. Now, probably not quite as bad as getting eaten by a shark or a crocodile, like I said, but still not fun. The guy in question, it was like some kind of artificial river for irrigation. It went something, it was around, uh, if I remember correctly, it was around some kind of a chemical plant or, or a fertilizer plant, something like that. He was flying over it, and he was trying to estimate its its length, and it was like thirty something feet. But a lot of people call it bullshit on it. He was drawing it, and he, he he tried to take people down there. They tried to they tried to find it. They never did. He saw something, but I don't think it was that big. Pretty like I alligator. said, it's kind of hard to estimate size. Yeah. Probably a seventeen foot all alligator, which is still been, horrifying. Still big. That's still big. Yeah. But not 35 feet. Yeah. Like I said, I would shit my pants if I saw a 17 foot I remember correctly, it was like 30-something feet, 30, 35 feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's giant. <laughs> he was saying where his nose was and where the tail was, on, you know, what it looked like from one side of the bank and the other. You know what I mean? Because it was in a channel, basically. Saad says, Jen, do you know the YouTube channel, The Y Files? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've only seen, like, a couple of their videos, but... That's probably... I think I'm subscribed to them, actually, but I don't watch that much of their stuff. But yeah, I have heard of it. Yeah, James said he could have seen 17 feet and just overestimated. Yeah. yeah. If I remember correctly, he circled, circled over it and then it submerged. He couldn't see it and he, he lost sight of it. Yeah. It was up on the surface when he saw it. 
And I mean, that's not always crazy because there was kind of wasn't one of those big giant anacondas like they saw it from the air and he's just like oh my god it was like however long yeah. and they were like yeah you're full of shit but then they found it later and they're like oh yeah you're right yeah. <laughs> it was fucking gigantic and it had like eaten a person or something yeah but yeah they there is like some big fuckers out there um yeah james says have a good night you guys yeah we're gonna wrap it up it's 11 03 here in nice cold florida 43 degrees 45 degrees I can't. It's 45 degrees. 45 degrees Fahrenheit in Florida. I love it. I love it. It's cold. I know. I like it. I finally get to wear, like, long sleeves and stuff. Yay. It'll probably be hot again tomorrow. But, you know, I'll en- I'll take it <laughs> when I can get it. But, yeah, thanks, everybody, for dropping by this evening. Thank you for your super chats. Remember to click on the link in the description box uh, for a 30-day free trial of Audible. Uh, there are sponsor and affiliate, so, you know, we get a little bit little bit of a commission every time somebody clicks on that and gets a membership so you can support the show that way if you would like to so remember to come back on friday night for our sidetrack show we're just going to drink and talk about bullshit more than we did on this show (laughs) you know uh so yeah so that should be fun thanks everybody for dropping by and hanging out with us this evening we will see you again on friday night good night